Her Fake Island Wedding. Book Three in the Island Escapes series. By Caitlin Lynch. Narrated by Catherine Bilson. Chapter One. It's a disaster, Lucy declared melodramatically, sliding her lunch tray onto the table. It was lunchtime, and Sunfish Island Resort staff cafeteria was busy, staff members hurrying in and out to grab a bite in between tasks. Lucy had joined a large group of friends, and several of them looked up at her words. What's up, girlfriend? Olivia, the resort's marketing manager, asked with an amused smile. Her American accent was just one of a dozen different accents in the room. Although the majority of the resort's staff were Australian, there were plenty of other nationalities represented. You look as though someone stole your puppy, Nessa, the resort's best bartender and Lucy's fellow Englishwoman, put in. Worse, Lucy said dismally. My mother's coming to visit next week. That provoked laughter around the table. She scowled impartially at all of them. You've only been here a month, Olivia pointed out. And why is she coming now? Did you warn her this is the hot season? I did, and she says she's already booked her flights because she got them cheap. You don't understand what a disaster this is, guys. She'll spend the whole visit pestering to know whether I've found a man yet. Lucy poked at her salad with a fork miserably. Her mother had always been both overprotective and demanding with her only child. And now that Lucy had turned 30, the insistence that she needed to hurry up and find a man to father her children before it was too late had only intensified. At the same time, her mother liked to denigrate Lucy's judgment, always telling her that she had terrible taste in men and she mustn't rush things or she'd pick the wrong man and be literally left holding the baby. It took everything Lucy had to not retort, like you were, every time her mother trotted out that particular criticism. Escape from her mother's constant nagging was just one of the reasons why she'd applied for the research position at Sunfish Island's Marine Biology Centre, and actually being awarded the post was literally a dream come true. Is she really that bad? Nessa asked sympathetically, and Lucy raised her eyes to meet the bartender's. You have no idea, she said dismally. I knew she'd come out, especially when the contract actually included four weeks free accommodation for visitors, but I really didn't think it'd be so soon. The few blissful weeks she'd spent on Sunfish Island had been among the best of her life. From the day she arrived, she'd been warmly welcomed by her fellow marine biologists and the staff of the wider resort alike. Her job, Studying the effects of coral replanting and regeneration on damaged parts of the magnificent Great Barrier Reef was quite literally her dream, and had been ever since she was a kid, picking up shells and starfish on the beach near her childhood home at Dover. We'll help distract her, Olivia offered. Won't we, Corey? Her boyfriend, Sunfish's activities director, looked up from his lunch with a nod and a smile. Corey Gillette was one of the best-looking men Lucy had ever met. Tall, blonde and athletic, he looked like a fourth Hemsworth brother. And he wasn't even the only one around the table who would fit right in with that famously attractive family. Does she dive? Bryce was the resort's resident dive instructor and had partnered with Lucy numerous times on her reef dives. I can put her on the daily schedule, no charge. She'll be too tired to nag you. Lucy smiled at him. If Bryce was only a few years older, she thought wistfully, she'd have made a serious pass at him, but he was only twenty-four and looked even younger. Blonde, tanned and beautiful, she just had to appreciate him visually. Unfortunately, she's terrified of open water, convinced there are sharks in it. Well, there are sharks in it, Bryce said equably. Mostly only the little reef sharks around here, though. Somehow I don't think that would reassure her. Bryce grinned cheerfully at her, and Lucy found herself smiling back. It was difficult to stay down around Bryce for long. He was too relentlessly happy. We'll just have to put you on the dive schedule every day, then, he said. Then I'd be accused of avoiding her. 
No, she sighed. There's no winning with my mother, not unless I produce a fiancé out of thin air and promise to start popping out babies nine months to the day after the wedding. That's the solution, then, Corey piped up, a wicked glint in his eyes. We'll find you a fake fiancé. Chapter Two Wait, what? Lucy blinked, startled. Fake fiancé, Corey smirked. Just think how amazed your mother will be. She'd be completely thrown. Bet she wouldn't hassle you at all. Better yet, Bryce put in, eyes beginning to gleam in the way Lucy had already learned meant he was formulating some prank or other. When she arrives, you should totally tell her that you have the best surprise ever for her. You're getting married while she's here. You were going to wait, but since she's here, the opportunity is just too good to miss. Everyone around the table, including Lucy, broke up laughing. Oh, man. Mum's expression would be epic, she said wistfully. It'd all fall apart when I have neither a boyfriend nor a fiancé to present, though. Why not? I'll do it. She gaped at him. Bryce grinned. Most epic prank ever. Come on, it'll be fun. Mrs. Heathers is a bit too stick in the mud to go for it, but Luke's a registered marriage celebrant as well, for when she has her days off. He'll totally play along. He could even fake up the registration and marriage certificates for you. He was referring to Luke Collier, the resort's general manager. Do you know, Lucy said slowly, I'm almost tempted to go along with you, just to shut Mum up. She looked thoughtfully at Bryce. They hadn't really spent a lot of time together, but she knew he had a wicked sense of humour and loved pranks. He was certainly good-looking enough to make any girl's heart flutter, with his height, bronzed tan and sparkling blue eyes, though his shaggy fair hair might need a tidy up. Or maybe not, she mused. It made him look even younger and more boyish, which would probably offend her mother even more. How old are you again? she checked. Twenty-four, Bryce said easily. I can be your toy boy. Corey was roaring with laughter, Olivia and Nessa giggling as well, egging her on and saying she should do it. Olivia offered one of her rarely used designer dresses from her days as a New York marketing guru to use as a wedding gown, and suddenly Lucy was in. If Luke's up for it, I'll do it, she said decisively. I'll owe you though, Bryce. He grinned and gave her a cheeky wink. I'll think of some way you can repay me. She couldn't help but laugh. No, she had no doubts about Bryce pulling off his part. He was a born actor and could easily have made his living on the stage or in front of the camera if he hadn't been so in love with the ocean. He'd play the besotted fiancé to the hilt and all she would have to do was worry about containing her laughter and not giving the game away to her mother. Are you really going to do it? Olivia asked. If Bryce is really up for dealing with my impossible mother, yes, Lucy declared. Charming impossible mothers is my specialty, Bryce claimed, making her laugh again. Right, well, if you are, I might be able to help with some of the stage setting, Olivia said. We wanted to redo the weddings pages on the website anyway. And if you were agreeable to having all the photos used for that purpose, I could get you the photographer for free, and flowers. Might be able to talk Luke into giving you a table at La Sirene. She named the resort's Michelin-starred French restaurant. Everything was moving a bit fast for Lucy, as Olivia pulled out her phone and started booking things into her diary. Whoa, she protested. I didn't even ask Luke if he'd go along with the fake wedding plan yet. Then you'd better go find him, hadn't you? Olivia didn't even look up from her phone. When does your mother arrive? Recognising Olivia was in full-on marketing guru mode, Lucy sighed and gave up the dates. Excellent! We don't have any weddings scheduled on the 20th. I'll get Terry and Jerome on the case. Olivia, I really don't need wedding planners, Lucy protested, starting to panic slightly. Olivia looked up. You might not, 
but if we're going to use this as a marketing opportunity, we're going to use every resource the resort has. She tilted her head, considering Bryce. Including the hair salon. Go book in for a haircut. I'll get hair and makeup for Lucy arranged on the morning of the wedding. Last chance to back out, Bryce told Lucy jokingly. I think I should be saying that to you, she pointed out. There's nothing in this for you but loads of hassle. He smiled, showing the dimple in his tanned cheek. Hey, it'll be fun. Come on, let's leave Olivia to her plotting and go find Luke. We should probably emphasise the marketing aspects rather more than the prank part. You're not wrong, Lucy agreed, giving up on her lunch. She wasn't hungry anymore anyway. Olivia looked up from her texting to say, Stop by my place later and we'll look through my dresses. Though I'm thinking I might just get some designer samples flown in from Sydney. Run away while you still can, Nessa said laughingly, and Lucy and Bryce took to their heels. Are you quite sure about this? Lucy asked Bryce, as the pair of them headed for reception and the general manager's office located on the floor above. I mean, you just volunteered for a fun prank, and suddenly Olivia's turning it into a production of Ben-Hur. Doesn't worry me, Bryce said with a shrug. What about you? It's one thing to tell your mum about a fake fiancé, but quite another to go through with a major production of a fake wedding. Yeah. Lucy chewed on her lower lip as they walked, unaware of Bryce staring at her mouth in fascination. Frankly, I'm looking forward to it. I might not ever even tell her it was all a fake. I'll just tell her we changed our minds and got divorced. Ah, oh, you never know, Bryce said. He put on an affected tone, making her grin at his light-hearted attitude. You might find you like being married to me. Chuckling, Lucy aimed a light punch at his thick biceps muscle. Sure, but being married is going to cramp your style. Lucy hadn't the faintest idea how crazy he was about her, Bryce realised ruefully. He'd thought Corey had given him away when his friend slyly suggested the fake fiancé idea while staring pointedly at Bryce, but Lucy seemed completely oblivious to the giant-sized crush Bryce had nursed ever since the beautiful, brilliant scientist arrived on the island. Some days it seemed as though everyone but Lucy knew about his crush too. Nessa had even made a teasing remark about it being a good thing the seat next to Bryce was vacant when Lucy entered the staff restaurant, else he'd probably have pushed someone out of the way in order to sit next to her. He'd wanted to protest that he wasn't quite that much of a hormonal teenager, but Lucy caught his eye and gave her usual sunny smile, and the words died on his lips. Because where Lucy Manning was concerned, Bryce's hormones were indeed ruling his head. Trying to keep his eyes off the perfect curve of her bottom in her thin shorts as she trotted up the stairs ahead of him, Bryce once again chastised himself for perving on her. Lucy had made it clear he was in the friend zone right from the beginning. Pretending to be her fake fiancé was probably a recipe for disaster, but there was no way he could resist the opportunity to spend more time with her, maybe even romance her a little, get her to look at him as something other than her young friend she dived with sometimes. I'm not worried, he answered her comment about cramping his style. He hadn't had a date in months. The resort had a strict no fraternisation policy between staff and guests, and the only staff member he'd felt any sort of romantic interest in was Lucy herself, Lucy of the fox chestnut hair and the vivid blue eyes. She wrinkled her pert, freckled little nose at him. On your own head be it, then. Just remember, you volunteered she said in the English accent that always made his knees go weak, and opened the door to the general manager's outer office. Luke's PA looked up from her computer and smiled at them both. Can I help you? Is Mr Collier available? Lucy asked politely. He's between meetings at the moment. I'll just check if he can see you. Please wait. Within moments, though, they were being shown into Luke's office, large windows on two sides looking over the resort's main pool area and the exclusive beach bungalows beyond it. Luke rose from his desk, piled high with paperwork, to greet them. Hey, Bryce, uh, 
Oh, God, I'm so sorry, I've forgotten your name. He looked sheepish, which was a quite adorable expression on his handsome, tanned face, Lucy thought. Lucy Manning, she said with a smile, waving off his forgetfulness. Hey, you've got several hundred staff of your own here. No reason why you should remember someone who doesn't even work directly for the resort. I do know you're one of our marine biologists, Luke said, gesturing them both to chairs. What can I do for the two of you, anyway? Some sort of diving issue? Not at all, Lucy said, looking sideways at Bryce. Deliberately, he folded his arms and grinned at her. Watching her fumble her way through this promised to be highly entertaining. She narrowed her eyes at him, but he wasn't about to help out. It was her mother they were staging this whole show for, after all. He was just along for the ride. We were wondering if you'd fake marry us, Lucy blurted, and Bryce almost choked at the expression of complete shock on Luke's face. Chapter 3 I'm sorry, what? Luke said eventually, clearly finding himself unable to add up the pieces to make any sort of sensible explanation. Lucy rushed into a babbled explanation about her mother coming to visit and Lucy's reasoning for producing a fake fiancé to get her mother off her back. I've heard worse plans for dealing with impossible parents, but actually going through with a fake wedding? Luke looked sceptical. Well, that wasn't part of the original plan, except then Bryce suggested it and Olivia sort of took over. She says she has a plan to redo the wedding section of the website, and if we'll let you use the photos, then you might be willing to go along and fake marry us. Lucy looked at him hopefully. Although I'd have thought you might want to hire models or something. You two are both good looking enough to be models. Luke waved off that suggestion. You look good together, actually. He tilted his head, considering them. So, basically, we stage it just like a real wedding. Take a ton of photos we can use for publicity purposes. And this has the side effect of getting your mother off your case. Lucy smiled hopefully and nodded and Luke looked at Bryce. And what's in this for you? Helping out a friend, and pulling off a really epic hoax. Bryce grinned, knowing that the latter comment would be enough to convince Luke he had no ulterior motives. Except, Luke was general manager for a reason, and part of that included great insight into people. Hmm, Luke said, his eyes narrowed, but he didn't ask Bryce any more questions. Lucy held her breath as Luke looked at them thoughtfully, his gaze moving from her to Bryce and back again. Leaning back in his chair, he steepled his fingers and said nothing for a long moment, obviously considering the plan for flaws. You could fill in the actual legal paperwork required by law to get married in Australia and show your mother a copy, he suggested eventually. It's the notice of intended marriage form which has to be filed a minimum of one month before a wedding and is then valid for 18 months. But it's not legally binding or anything. That works. Lucy looked at the calendar on his desk, counting days. That would mean we could have the ceremony on the date Olivia suggested, the 20th, two days before my mother leaves. The only flaw in the plan is that I have to register an actual marriage within 14 days. And if your mother happened to look up the records later, she wouldn't be able to find it. Though I presume you'll have admitted to the prank by then. Luke raised his eyebrows at her interrogatively. Sure, Lucy agreed, though she hadn't really thought through when and how she might tell her mother. That was a problem for future Lucy, and in the present, she had a fake wedding to plan. As long as you don't sign the marriage register, it's not legal then. Luke shrugged. I can say all the usual words. I'm guessing you brought this to me rather than Mrs. Heather's because you thought I'd be more amenable to the idea. I don't know her, Lucy disclaimed, but Bryce chirped up again. It was my idea, and yes. She's a dear, and she's adapted really well to performing same-sex weddings now the law has changed, but I don't see her being party to any deception. She'd do the marketing part of it, but she wouldn't agree to deceive Lucy's mum, I think. You're probably right. She hasn't had a break for a while, 
I might encourage her to take that whole week off, Luke said with a little glint in his eye. Just to make sure there's no risk of anything slipping out which shouldn't. He'd bought into the plan, Lucy thought with relief. Thanks, Mr. Collier, she said gratefully. Call me Luke. He smiled warmly at her. Just a moment and I'll print this form off. Get it back to me before five today so I can scan and file it, please. They waited while he clicked his mouse and tapped a few keys on the keyboard, and after a moment the printer whirred to life. Luke handed the still warm pages over with a nod of dismissal, and they escaped his office with the papers clutched tightly in Lucy's sweating hand. God, that was nerve-wracking! Lucy sagged against the wall once they'd retreated back to the staff quarters. Luke's very nice, but I always get the feeling he can see right through me. Bryce stuck his hands in his pockets and grinned ruefully. Pity you don't know him better. He'd probably be a lot more acceptable to your mum as a fiancé than I will be. Successful and all that, and I know girls think he's handsome. I suppose, Lucy said doubtfully. Can't say I noticed. I was too worried he was going to boot me out of his office with a flea in my ear. And my mum would never believe he was into me anyway. Guys like that are never attracted to me. Like that? Bryce cocked his head curiously. You know, mature, confident, responsible. She grinned impishly. I wouldn't last five minutes with a boyfriend like Luke. I'd be putting itching powder or something in his shorts, trying to get him to loosen up. Bryce cracked up laughing. See, even you recognise I'd drive him round the bend. No way would Mum buy someone like Luke was in love with me. I'm too dippy. You're not dippy. He shook his head at her, still laughing. You don't get a doctorate in marine biology by being dippy. You just have a slightly eccentric sense of humour, that's all. It's adorable. And that's why Mum will believe in you where she wouldn't Luke. She'll think being six years younger than me, you won't care about my immature attitude. Hey, stop putting yourself down. You're not immature. You like to have fun. That's not a crime. A little to her surprise, he held out a hand towards her. When she blinked uncertainly at it, he grinned. Your mum definitely won't believe we're in a relationship if you can't even hold my hand to take a walk. Lucy laughed and put her hand in his, feeling his long, strong fingers close around hers. You got me there. OK, where are we walking to? Don't you have to get back to the biocenter? Figured I'd walk you back. Presumably you'll need to let your colleagues there in on the prank as well, so none of them let the cat out of the bag to your mother. I thought you might want me there to confirm that you're not pulling their collective legs. That's really thoughtful of you. Thanks. Lucy hadn't really thought about telling her colleagues at the Marine Biology Research Centre about the plan, but she would certainly have to. I guess I hadn't really thought of telling them this afternoon. Like it or not, you started a ball rolling, Lucy. Bryce's eyes were serious as he looked down at her. He was a full head taller than her five foot five, Lucy noticed inconsequentially and his eyes were a beautiful shade of green, almost emerald. By dinner time, the rumours will be all over the resort. Or hadn't you noticed how the speed of gossip around here nearly approaches light speed? I had, she admitted. But somehow I hadn't thought anyone would care, because it's not like we're in an actual relationship. Are you kidding me? We need literally everyone on board to pull this one off. Everyone gets the chance to play a part. I reckon that's why Luke gave you the OK, actually. It's a fun project which will have all the staff on board and be great for morale. Wow, Lucy said when she caught her breath. You have thought this through way better than I have. Hey, you're too close to it. It's your mother you're trying to get off your back. Believe me, I know how that goes. Which is a good point. What about your parents? Won't it seem odd that they're not here? For the first time, she saw a shadow cross Bryce's open, cheerful face. Not to me, no. 
It was obviously a sore subject, but she was immediately dying of curiosity. Biting down on her tongue, she determined not to ask. Bryce sighed and shook his head after a moment. You should know, though, because your mum is going to ask. I don't really talk with my folks. I'm a huge disappointment, you see. Why? You've got a good job doing something you love. Now I do, yeah. But I flunked school so badly, at 16 the teachers told my parents there was nothing more they could do for me. I'm extremely dyslexic. For a few years there, I honestly had no clue whether I'd ever be able to hold down any sort of job at all, beyond manual labour on the road crews or something like that. Lucy's mouth opened in a silent O. Oh. My father is a cruise ship captain, and my mother is an award-winning travel writer and photographer. They're both well-educated, erudite people who had no idea what to do with an idiot son. You're not an idiot, Lucy said immediately, jumping to his defence. You're a dive instructor, for God's sake. I don't even want to think about how hard those exams must have been to pass with dyslexia. A dive master herself, she knew the instructor's examinations were a great deal tougher, with written exams including equations and comprehensive knowledge, as well as the practical tests. Bryce grinned at her. I studied for six months straight, recorded everything onto an MP3 player, and walked around like a zombie listening to my own voice reciting the nitrox tables until I was saying them in my sleep. Literally. You must have wanted it pretty badly. More than I'd ever wanted anything in my life, Bryce said simply. We were in Thailand when I had my first dive. Dad was between ships and Mum was writing another book. I'd just been told not to bother going back to school and spent most of my time on the beach sulking and panicking, if I'm being completely honest. It was quiet one day and I struck up a conversation with a couple of German backpackers who asked me if I wanted to go diving with them. I said yes on impulse, and after one dive I was hooked. But your parents weren't supportive, Lucy queried. He shrugged. I don't think they saw a future in it. Not when they knew I'd eventually have to pass exams to reach a level where I could make a career out of it anyway. And now? She was honestly curious. Her mother might give her grief about her personal life, but she'd never been anything but supportive about Lucy's career and had celebrated her winning the coveted position on Sunfish Island by proudly announcing it on Facebook and throwing her a going-away party. Eh, I think they're just glad they don't have to support me. We never had all that close a relationship. I spent school terms living with my grandmother mostly, because they were away so much, until I was old enough to go to boarding school. I was kind of a late-life accident for them anyway. I don't think they actually planned to have kids and didn't know what to do with me when I came along. Lucy was pretty sure he didn't want pity, so she just nodded. Would they even be available for the wedding? she asked. Not on short notice. Dad's ship is in the Mediterranean and Mum's with him there. I suppose she could fly back, but she'd probably find an excuse. All in all, better they just don't know about it. If they see pictures on the internet, I'll give them the truth, that they're being used for marketing purposes. That works, Lucy conceded. They'd arrived at the research centre now, and she took a deep breath, squaring her shoulders before realising she was still holding Bryce's hand. It felt very natural, actually. Guiltily, she slipped her hand free and gave him a small smile. Well, better go recruit some more participants for the prank, then. He laughed at her before opening the door and holding it gallantly for her to precede him inside. Come on. I've got a beginner's diving class in the main pool at two. Let's get it over with. Chapter Four Walking away from the bio-centre twenty minutes later, Bryce whistled tunelessly to himself. His skin still tingled from the feel of Lucy's small hand held in his. The scent of her apple shampoo still teased his nostrils from the unexpected hug she'd given him when he said he had to go. She was small and slight, but there was a surprising strength in her arms as she hugged on around his waist 
and after a startled moment, he'd folded his arms around her shoulders to hug her back. Thanks for everything, Bryce, she whispered. You're a good friend. Stuck in the friend zone. He hated himself for resenting the unpalatable fact. It was Lucy's absolute right to just want to be friends, and he really didn't want to be a petulant man-child about it. She didn't owe him anything, and he vowed to himself that he wasn't going to use the opportunity she'd given him to be a creeper. Whatever she asked him for, he would do, but he wasn't going to be pushy. Even asking her to hold his hand had felt as though he was coercing her into something she might not want, though she'd accepted willingly enough. He could still feel the soft warmth of her delicate fingers in his. Bryce! A voice called his name, and he turned to see Rosie, the staff manager, hurrying towards him. The grin on her face confirmed that the gossip had already reached her. Is it true? Are you and Lucy faking a romance to put the wind up her mother? Not just a romance, he confirmed. We're faking a full-on wedding. That's what Nessa gabbled at me before she ran off to start her shift, but I didn't quite believe it. Are you sure this is a good idea? Rosie tilted her head and looked at him knowingly. I wouldn't want you to get your heart broken. Does everyone but Lucy know about my crush? Bryce asked despairingly. Hmm, I'd say yes, pretty much. Rosie pretended to think before smirking at him. You never know. She might realise for herself what a catch you are. In my dreams. Hey, that's not like you. Where's that positive attitude? She nudged him lightly, and he smiled despite himself. I'm just thinking that Lucy's my friend, whether or not she ever wants anything more, and she needs this to feel better about herself and her relationship with her mum. That's what friends do, right? Help when you need something. That's a good way to look at it, Rosie said encouragingly. Plus, Lucy's mother sounds like a bit of a bitch, and I know all about difficult, demanding parents. Maybe if mine come to visit, she'll return the favour and pretend to be my girlfriend. They'd be super impressed to see me with such a beautiful, smart woman. The more he thought about it, the more he liked the idea. His parents were probably due for a visit sometime this year. He was sure Lucy would happily help him out. OK. Just, if there's anything you need a friendly ear for, I'm here, all right? And confidentiality applies. Lucy doesn't work for the resort anyway, so she doesn't fall under my authority. There's no conflict of interest. Thanks, Rosie, Bryce said, genuinely touched. Knowing how touchy-feely Rosie was, he stopped walking and extended his arms to invite a hug, which she happily dished out. I promise I'll come to you if I'm getting out of my depth. Good. She patted his shoulder and let him go. With a quick glance at his dive watch, he broke into a jog. He'd need to hustle to get back to his cabin, get changed, and get to the pool for the dive lesson on time. And he needed to start on time, because when he finished, he'd have to hurry back to his cabin, in order to have time to fill in the forms Luke had given him and Lucy to get back by the end of the business day at five. He should probably have asked Rosie for help with them, actually. She knew all about his dyslexia. Well he'd just have to manage. He'd ask Luke to check it over anyway, to make sure he hadn't made any egregious errors. Throughout his beginner's lesson, Bryce couldn't stop thinking about Lucy. Standing waist-deep in the pool explaining the proper usage of a regulator, he couldn't help but think about the first time he'd met her. She'd been on the island a couple of days, and, as was standard procedure for the incoming marine biologists, had to go out on a dive with Bryce in order for him to sign her off as competent to operate without supervision with the island's equipment. She'd almost danced her way onto the dive boat, wearing a bright red bikini, which wasn't much more than a few triangles of cloth tied together with string. Bryce, turning to greet her, almost swallowed his tongue. Hi, Lucy said brightly. You must be Bryce. Excuse me not showing up in my wetsuit, but it's so damn hot I couldn't bear to put it on yet. Somehow he managed to find his voice, though he was pretty sure it came out an octave or two higher than normal, 
as he returned her greeting and told her it was fine. They'd be taking a twenty-minute boat ride out to the dive site anyway. Watching her wiggle and shimmy her way into the wetsuit was one of the sexiest things he'd ever seen, though he was sure she wasn't doing it to give him a show intentionally. She was just utterly unaware of how gorgeous she was, he thought, as she turned back to him with another of those wide, cheerful grins. With the skin-tight suit only half zipped up, his eyes were inevitably drawn to her breasts, and the way the suit almost popped them right out of that tiny red bikini. Eyes on her eyes, Bryce told himself sternly, wondering why she affected him so strongly. He'd dived with plenty of beautiful women before. He lived on a tropical resort island, where stunners in bikinis were pretty much everywhere, and yet somehow, this small Englishwoman with the mouth that was slightly too wide, and a spatter of freckles across her nose that confirmed she wore not a scrap of makeup, had him completely off balance. Lucy spent the whole boat ride to the dive site chattering away about how excited she was to dive on the Great Barrier Reef for the first time. And the fact that I'm actually getting paid to be here! I can't believe I'm this lucky! She turned shining eyes to Bryce, who was just utterly enchanted. He didn't think he'd ever met anyone with such zest, such passion for life, and couldn't help wondering if she'd show a similar passion in bed. Telling himself to stop being such a lecher, Bryce settled his eyes on Lucy's face and determined to keep them there. She was the kind of person who made even a sunny day seem dull in comparison, so it was hardly a hardship. And that was where he'd kept them ever since, on her face, and not her breasts, or that beautiful bottom, ridiculously curvaceous in her wetsuit. Hey Bryce! Bryce! A voice calling his name brought him back to his present reality, waist-deep in a swimming pool with four beginner divers who would be going on their first reef dive in the morning. Sternly castigating himself for losing focus, he smiled at the young woman who'd been trying to get his attention. Sorry, I was miles away. What's your question? She fluttered her eyelashes at him and edged closer. Nothing about the diving. You covered everything very thoroughly. I just wondered if you were doing anything for dinner tonight. I have a table reserved at La Sirene. Bryce didn't even know her name. She was pretty and close to his own age, probably twenty-two or three, but her obvious advance left him completely cold. Even if resort policy hadn't forbidden fraternisation between guests and staff, he wouldn't have been tempted. Thanks for the invite, but I'll be having dinner with my fiancé he said, suddenly inspired. Oh, the girl's face dropped visibly. Well, all right then. Does she work here? She's with the Marine Biology Research Centre, Bryce said proudly, and that was the end of the conversation, as one of the other guests called to him with a question. He made his escape quickly at the end of the lesson, hurrying back to his cabin and drying off, before sitting down at the desk and looking at the form Luke had given him to fill in. As usual, the words swam and danced in front of his eyes, making him rub at his eyelids and pinch the bridge of his nose, before he used his forearm to block out all but the first line and read the words slowly aloud. A tap on the edge of the screen door made him scowl. I'm busy, he called out, hoping whoever it was would take the hint and go away. Looking at that form, Lucy's English-accented voice said, and his head snapped around. Lucy! Bryce stood up so fast he knocked his chair over, though he managed to catch it before it hit the floor. I thought you'd still be working. It's not five yet, is it? Surely not. He'd only just sat down. No, I got the boss to let me go early. God knows I work plenty of unpaid overtime. She smiled up at him as he opened the screen door to admit her to his cabin. I remembered what you said about being dyslexic and thought you might be having some issues with the form, so I figured I'd stop by and we could fill them in together before we take them back to Luke. That's a good idea, Bryce said, touched by her consideration. Also, I don't know your last name. I was about to write down Hemsworth when I realised it probably isn't. Bryce blinked, bemused. What? 
No, it's Seabrook. Hemsworth? In joke, she plopped down to sit cross-legged on the end of his bed. You and Corey both look like extra Hemsworth brothers. You know, Thor? He got it then and grinned, shaking his head. That's ridiculous. In case you hadn't noticed, I'm not exactly the most sensible person you'll ever meet. You're plenty sensible. You're here to help me fill in this damn form so we get it in on time, right? Bryce sat down in his chair again and scowled at the offending piece of paper. Lucy watched Bryce's face as he scowled at the form, obviously struggling to puzzle out the words, and melted inside. He looked utterly gorgeous sitting there in just a pair of board shorts, muscular bronzed torso on full display. Is he even aware of how damn sexy he is? she wondered. Particularly when he chewed on his full lower lip like that and stroked those long fingers over his chiselled jaw. She followed their path, mesmerised and suddenly aroused, thinking how his hands would feel on her body. Lucy? Yes. Sorry, what? Mentally kicking herself for being so distracted she hadn't paid attention to what he was saying, she focused determinedly as he asked the question again. Yes, of course. Helping you with the form. That's why I'm here. Not that she would be of much use sitting on the end of the bed. Pushing herself up, she crossed to his desk and leaned over his shoulder. All right, where are you up to? With her telling him what to write in each space, they were soon done, and Bryce rose to his feet, giving her a grateful smile. Thanks, Luce. We'd better run these up to Luke's office. He picked up a T-shirt and pulled it on over his head although the white fabric clung lovingly to his muscles and looked great against his tan, Lucy still spared a moment to silently mourn the loss of her spectacular view. As she walked beside Bryce on their trip back to the main building, his hand brushed against her wrist lightly, and almost automatically, Lucy took his hand. Bryce's confident stride stuttered slightly, and he looked down at her hand before looking across at her face. This is okay, right? she thought to check. I mean, if we practice holding hands, it should seem natural by the time Mum arrives. It's fine. His fingers curled more firmly around hers. It was my idea, remember? And it was a good one. Also a bad one, because she could get to like holding Bryce's hand. A lot. Chapter 5 Luke didn't appear to have moved since their earlier visit, though the piles of paper had migrated around his desk somewhat. He looked tired as he lifted his head and nodded to them to come in. Still set on this, then? Yep. Lucy spoke for both of them, setting the completed forms down on Luke's desk. He looked at her thoughtfully, swinging back and forth a little on his office chair, before nodding and picking them up to feed into his scanner. I'll get them sent off straight away, he smirked a little. And you should stop by and see Terry and Jerome. They're excited. Oh, God, Olivia got to them already. Lucy looked at Bryce with open dread. He chuckled at her. Come on, let's go see them now. Best start reining them in, or you'll find they've planned the most elaborate wedding the island's ever seen, and you'll have no choices in the matter at all. The thought was so horrifying that she grabbed Bryce's hand again and half dragged him out of the office without even saying goodbye to Luke. Hurrying along the hallway to the large office Terry and Jerome shared, her mind was full of enormous meringue-like wedding dresses and bridesmaids in a hideous shade of tangerine. By the time they reached the wedding planner's office, she'd calmed down a little and remembered she didn't even have any bridesmaids, which was something she'd need to arrange before her mother arrived. Maybe Olivia would agree to be a maid of honour. Terry and Jerome were bent over the big planning table they used, arguing over something as they usually did. Lucy wasn't sure she'd ever seen the pair of them when they weren't bickering, though they were actually married. They'd been the very first same-sex couple married on the island when Australia legalised gay marriage, and their wedding photos were up on the website already. Lucy! Jerome spied her first and straightened up throwing his arms wide. Darling girl, come here, we have such plans for you. 
Er, uh, Lucy said. Not too big, I hope. I've never had visions of an extravagant wedding. Told you not to get carried away, Terry said snarkily, folding his arms. Classy and simple has to be the way to go. Lucy shot him a grateful look and nodded. That's what my mum will expect anyway. Well, simple, if not classy. Impossible mothers are a nightmare, Jerome said sympathetically. We'll knock her socks off, Lucy. Don't you worry. You and Bryce make an absolutely beautiful couple. Look at them holding hands, Terry. He nudged his husband, and Terry chuckled. Actually, that's a point. We should make an effort to get some photos of you two together each day, so you're wearing different outfits and look like you're always in each other's company. Put them up on the resort's social media accounts so there's evidence for your mother to find if she goes looking. You'd have been a terrifying criminal mastermind, darling, Jerome said. But he's absolutely right. Tell everyone to take snaps of you regularly. There's just the slight problem that I hate having my photo taken, and I always look like I have a weird fake smile, Lucy despaired. I'll tell everyone just to take candid shots. They're better anyway, Bryce said, surprising her. It'll be good practice, looking at each other adoringly. That's the spirit, Terry said cheerfully. Now, Lucy, Olivia said she originally suggested lending you one of her designer dresses, but we can do better than that. There's a bridal shop in Early Beach we sometimes send customers to, and I've already spoken to their manager, who would be delighted to dress you for free. Dress, shoes, accessories, it's all yours, he beamed at her. And the jewellery shop right here in the resort will loan you an engagement ring until after the wedding, and two wedding bands to use at the ceremony. They really did have everything under control, Lucy realised as Terry barrelled on, talking about hair and makeup, flowers and catering, photography and videography. After a couple of minutes she tuned out, looking up at Bryce and seeing him apparently listening intently. God, he's so good looking. Mum's never going to believe he's in love with me. As though sensing her scrutiny, he suddenly looked down at her and smiled. Holding her eyes, he lifted the hand still linked with hers, and to her intense surprise, pressed a gentle kiss to the back of her hand before lowering it again. Lucy couldn't help but wonder what Bryce meant by the affectionate gesture. Was it just more practice as far as he was concerned? She tried to tell herself not to read too much into it, but the soft warmth of his lips against her skin left a tingling feeling, long after they'd left the wedding planner's office. Want to go get some dinner? Bryce suggested as they headed back down the main staircase to reception. Sounds good, Lucy agreed. I was too distracted to eat much lunch. Yeah, I noticed. Did you really? came out before Lucy could stop herself and Bryce looked down at her with a slight smile. I notice everything about you, Lucy. She hadn't the slightest idea what to say in response to that bombshell, but fortunately was saved from having to come up with a response when Corey came out of a side pathway to join them. Hey, you two. Having fun? His smile was just slightly malicious. Your girlfriend's been the one having fun, I think, Bryce parried quickly. Corey shrugged. It's the low season. She's bored, and you basically dangled a fun project in front of her and gave her free rein to run with it. Honestly, I don't mind, Lucy said. Quite the opposite. I'm grateful. There's no way I could pull off anything as convincing as what Terry and Jerome have been outlining to us, and Olivia's obviously the one who got them enthused. She does have a tendency to drag everyone along in her wake. Corey's grin was proud. One minute you're carrying on as normal, and the next Cyclone Olivia's blown through, and everything looks wildly different. It was more than obvious that Corey absolutely adored Olivia. His face lit up when he spoke about her, and Lucy found herself envious of the obviously tight and passionate relationship the two of them shared. She wanted that, wanted to feel that way about someone, a lover who'd talk about her with that joy and adoration clear on his face for all to see. 
Would her mother believe she was marrying Bryce if Lucy didn't have that light in her eyes when she talked about him? Lucy had always been a romantic at heart, and her mother knew it. Well, she'd just have to do her best, and spend the next couple of weeks getting to know every personal detail Bryce would share with her. She liked him, after all, perhaps a little too much, so spending time with him wasn't exactly going to be a hardship. Chapter 6 Breathe, Bryce nudged Lucy in the ribs lightly. You've gone white as a sheet. He was holding her hand, as usual these days, but this time she was clinging to it like a lifeline. Because at any moment, her mother was going to walk through the sliding doors from the airport's secure area and see them together, and the charade would begin in earnest. The last two weeks had flown by. Lucy had a much greater sympathy for women who turned into bridezillas when things didn't go exactly to their plan now. On such short notice, Olivia, Terry and Jerome had pulled together an absolutely breathtaking plan for a wedding. But multiple things still had to be changed due to unavailability or expense. Lucy had just shrugged and rolled with the changes, but she could imagine how a girl who had her heart set on something could easily get upset and overwhelmed by it all in the run-up to the biggest day of her life. Especially if she had family who were bringing pressure to bear as well. Your mum's flight is just starting to clear now. Rosie noted. Standing just in front of them, she was helping to greet the guests in coming to the resort along with Jill, the guest relations manager. Lucy didn't know Jill well, but the other girl had stepped up to do her part in the charade as well, upgrading Lucy's mother to a premium guest suite rather than a standard resort room and sending a request to housekeeping to have a welcoming basket placed in the room. Mother of the bride, the card tucked into the beautiful arrangement of fruit said, and there was champagne in the bar fridge, too. Oh, God! Lucy's hands were cold and clammy, but Bryce didn't try to let go. He squeezed comfortingly on her numb fingers instead, trying to warm her. Easy. It's all going to go fine. She won't see anything past that sparkler on your finger. Which was yet another thing Lucy had to worry about. She'd tried to pick out a plain, simple ring at the resort jeweller, They'd had other ideas, and since their jewellery would feature prominently in the marketing photographs, she didn't really feel able to say no, especially once they'd assured her their insurance would cover her in the case of loss or damage. Consequently, she was wearing a spectacular princess-cut, two-carat diamond solitaire that would have cost Bryce about a quarter of his annual salary if he'd been paying for it. She'd pointed that out, but Bryce had decided for reasons of his own to accompany her to the jeweller, and he'd cut off her objections with a few simple words. I'd spend a lot more than that if I was lucky enough to find a woman as amazing as you who was willing to marry me. The words had made her feel warm all over, especially combined with the sincerity in his eyes as he spoke them. Every time she saw the glint of the diamond, she remembered the way Bryce had called her amazing. Taking a deep, calming breath, she looked up at him and smiled. He smiled back, and that warm glance between the two of them was the first thing Justine Manning saw as she walked through the sliding doors. Lucy! Her mother's welcoming call made Lucy startle and look away from Bryce, her cheeks flushing. Mum, she said with a smile. Holy shit, Bryce said as she stepped forward. That's your mother. Lucy knew exactly what he meant. Justine Manning would be 53 in a few months, but she looked to be in her mid-thirties at most, a stunning, model-tall, raven-haired beauty who turned every male head in a three-block radius. She looked like Lucy's taller, more glamorous older sister, perfectly made up with not a hair out of place, even after flying halfway around the world. Darling, you look marvellous! Justine said in the plummy, upper-class accent Lucy had made a conscious decision never to sound like. Love the tan! And who's this gorgeous young stud? Brought him along to carry the bags, have you? She skimmed her eyes up and down Bryce's tall, muscled form in a blatantly sexual appraisal that made Lucy grit her teeth. Surprise, Lucy said with a grin. This is Bryce. We're engaged. 
she waved her hand, making the diamond flash glints of multicoloured light. For the first time in her entire life, Lucy saw her mother rendered absolutely speechless. Bryce took that as his cue and stepped forward, extending a hand. It's lovely to finally meet you, Ms Manning. Lucy's told me so much about you. I wish I could say the same, Justine finally recovered enough to say, taking his hand. Engaged? But why? Bryce blinked. What? Why are you engaged to Lucy? You gorgeous young thing. You could have anyone. Behind her, Lucy heard Jill and Rosie gasp in outraged unison. She had indeed told Bryce a lot about her mother, though, including a pretty accurate prediction of exactly what Justine might say when they dropped the bombshell. Bryce just raised his eyebrows and looked amused. That's a good one. I'm lucky Lucy bothered to look at me twice, Ms Manning. You must call me Justine, she said after a brief pause. Well, this is a surprise, but a pleasant one. When are you two planning to get married? She gave the handle of her suitcase to Bryce as he gestured towards it. Well, that's the second surprise, Lucy said, taking a certain malicious delight in the way Justine's eyes narrowed, anticipating another bombshell. It's a week on Friday. Chapter 7 are you OK? Rosie asked in an undertone as Bryce helped Justine aboard the boat to Sunfish Island. That was pretty extreme. And publicly messy, Lucy thought but didn't say. Fortunately, Jill had spirited the other incoming guests off to the bus, leaving Bryce, Rosie and Lucy to bring a stunned Justine along behind. By the time they arrived at the bus, Justine had progressed from This has to be a prank! to how dare you not tell me about this? At that point, Jill took charge, welcoming her to the resort as a VIP guest, which rather took the wind out of Justine's sails. The 20-minute bus ride from the airport to the marina had been difficult, with Justine fairly shoving Lucy into a seat and hissing questions into her ear. I'll be OK, Lucy answered Rosie's question in an equally quiet voice. To be honest? I'm quite enjoying seeing Mum this flustered. Rosie's lips twitched with laughter. It's pretty funny watching her with Bryce. She looks like she doesn't know whether she wants to ogle him or push him overboard. Don't give her ideas. Lucy couldn't help a giggle at the mental image, though. Bryce returned to her side just then. Come on, you two. You're the last ones to board. Everyone's eager to get to Sunfish. Let's go. He slipped his arm around Lucy's waist, which startled her slightly. While she'd gotten used to holding his hand, this was slightly more intimate. She turned her face up to him in surprise. Your mother's watching, Bryce said softly, just before he pressed a light kiss on her lips and smiled broadly at her. Let's go, lovebirds, Rosie said loudly, striding up the ramp, and Lucy was grateful for Bryce's supportive arm around her waist as they followed because that light brush of lips had rocked her to the core. What the hell had possessed him, kissing Lucy like that? Bryce's lips were still tingling as he released her and moved to the front of the boat to help cast off the lines. Justine's denigration of Lucy had outraged him, though, and he was now determined to rub her nose in the fact that Lucy had proved her mother's predictions wrong. Kissing her had seemed like the most obvious thing to do, and he'd done his best to make it look natural. The problem was that as soon as their lips met, he'd wanted more. It had taken everything he had not to drag her hard against him and kiss her senseless. His lips were still tingling, every sense on high alert, hyper-aware of Lucy's movements at all times. He was always aware of her, but right now he was pretty sure he could have closed his eyes and still known if she made the slightest move. Bryce, Jill's voice said behind him, and he jumped about a foot in the air, making her shriek with surprise. Sorry, he apologised. I was miles away. Hand to her heart, Jill stared at him wide-eyed. I was just going to ask if you'd demonstrate putting on a life vest while I do the safety briefing, she said. Of course. 
Embarrassed, Bryce followed her into the boat's main cabin, plastering on a broad smile for the benefit of the incoming guests. Justine was staring at him, even as a male guest, probably fifteen years her junior, shifted seats to sit beside her and make a hopeful pass. Holy hell, she really was stunning, he thought very privately. He hadn't actually asked Lucy how old her mother was, but Justine couldn't have been much out of her teens when Lucy was born, and she could easily pass for the same age as Lucy now. That said, he'd always thought Lucy looked a lot younger than she actually was. Obviously, she'd inherited Justine's eternal youth gene. Go away, Justine said coldly to the poor sap trying to hit on her, and the guy immediately moved away, crushed. At least Lucy didn't inherit the bitch gene, Bryce thought, muscles along his jaw clenching. He'd been absolutely livid in the airport when Justine had put Lucy down by asking why on earth Bryce would be interested in her. What a dreadful thing to say about your own daughter. More determined than ever to convince Justine that he was madly in love with Lucy and could hardly wait to marry her, Bryce smiled warmly in her direction several times during the safety demo before going straight back out to the front of the boat where Lucy and Rosie were sitting. Hey. Taking a seat beside Lucy, he put his arm around her shoulders, deliberately leaned in close and planted a kiss on the side of her brow. Your mother just shot down some poor fool who tried to hit on her. Lucy smiled tightly. No doubt there'll be plenty of that. She wouldn't be interested in anyone, Rosie asked curiously, keeping her voice low. She hates men, and frankly she doesn't have a lot of time for women either. Lucy cast a glance at the open doorway, keeping her own voice low. My father was married, promised he'd leave his wife for her. The usual. Didn't follow through. She had to fight him to get child support paid. I think she might actually have loved him until she realised he was lying his ass off. Rosie winced. Bryce tightened his arm around Lucy, instinctively wanting to comfort her. She looked up at him with a small smile. My mother is a bundle of neurotic contradictions, I'm afraid. Wants grandkids, but wants me to be married first, but is also convinced that no man is worth marrying. Frankly, you did well to turn out so normal, Rosie said, and Lucy chuckled. Who says I'm normal? Beautifully, perfectly normal, Bryce said loudly, alerting the two girls to Justine's approach. He'd spotted her from the corner of his eye approaching the door. Bit windy out here, isn't it? Justine said, smoothing her hair as the wind whipped at it. Silently, Lucy offered a spare hair tie from the several snapped around her wrist. Justine ignored the gesture, leaning in the doorway and looking at the three of them. Rosie promptly hopped up and offered her seat, and Justine accepted with a queenly grace, as though it was no more than her due. Bryce and Lucy both caught Rosie's eye roll behind Justine's back and had to stifle chuckles. So, how long will it take to get to the resort? Justine asked. About another twenty minutes, Bryce answered her. This is a fast hydrofoil boat. We're travelling at over thirty knots. You'll be able to see Sunfish Island shortly, once we pass through the channel between those two islands there. And you work there too, hmm? Justine queried. Yes, I'm the resort's diving instructor. Here comes the interrogation, he thought, and wasn't disappointed as Justine began to pepper him with questions. Justine, Lucy interrupted after a few minutes. Mum, leave it out. I'm just curious, darling. You haven't so much as whispered Bryce's name. One might almost think you were ashamed of him. Justine was wearing large designer sunglasses which completely covered her eyes and did a fair job of obscuring her facial expression, but Bryce was pretty sure her eyes were boring into him like lasers. Absolutely not. Lucy denied, and then she ducked her head. To be honest, I've been having trouble believing that it's real, that I'm not just living in some fantastic dream. Bryce saw Justine's mouth soften and knew she was falling for it. It really was a spectacular bit of acting on Lucy's part, and completely believable considering Lucy's lack of self-confidence, largely caused by Justine putting her down, he thought. 
I'm the one who's living my dream, Angel, he murmured, leaning in to press a kiss against her brow again. Well, Justine said after a moment of silence, I can see the two of you are quite sickeningly in love. She's genuinely falling for it, Bryce thought. He saw the corner of Lucy's mouth turn up, wondered if she was smiling on the other side too. She didn't say anything, though, so he stepped into the breach. Your daughter's an incredible woman, Justine. I know how lucky I am, believe me. Huh. Justine shook her head slightly, and Bryce realised the only reason she was doubtful was her poor opinion of Lucy's charms. One look at her and I was slavering like a dingo in a drought, he said humorously, deliberately playing up his Australian twang. But it was when I got to know her and realised how smart she was, I knew I was sunk. Lucy pinched the outside of his leg lightly, a prearranged signal which meant you're overdoing things. Bryce disagreed. Girl of my dreams, he said, deliberately making his voice low and husky as he stroked Lucy's cheek lightly, pretending to forget Justine's presence entirely. Lucy's eyes were very green and bright as she looked up at him. Perhaps she was trying to give him a stern glare, tell him to tone things down, but she'd pursed her lips to do it, and suddenly all he could think about was kissing her again, more deeply than the brief peck he'd given her earlier. He forgot Justine's presence for real as Lucy's lips parted just slightly. The way Bryce was looking at her made Lucy catch her breath. She was trying to glare him into silence, tell him he was overdoing things and Justine would smell a rat, but the husky tone in his voice and the heat in his eyes made it impossible to even think of being annoyed with him. In fact, all she could think of was the way his lips had felt on hers, and of how much she wanted him to kiss her again. Bryce's gaze dropped to her lips and his own parted, the tip of his tongue darting out to moisten his upper lip. His head lowered towards hers, slowly, giving her time to back away if she wanted to. Lucy's eyelids drooped as she felt his warm breath against her mouth, already anticipating the heat of his kiss. Jeez, get a room, you two, Justine said, laughing. Lucy flinched back instinctively, her eyes flying wide and her face flushing red. I, ah, uh, I see exactly how it is. Justine said dryly. The two of you are so wrapped up in each other, you forgot I was even here. Yes, Bryce said, and he sounded a little puzzled. Yes, that's exactly it. Lucy sneaked a quick sideways glance at him, but he was rising to his feet and she missed seeing the expression on his face. We're coming around the point of the island now. The jetty's just ahead. Bryce told Justine as he headed to the prow of the boat and picked up one of the mooring lines, preparing to help dock the boat. I know there's a lovely suite reserved for you, Lucy told Justine brightly. Jill pulled some strings to get you an upgrade. I assumed I'd be staying with you, but I suppose you and Bryce are living together anyway. The staff accommodations are pretty sparse, Lucy said, suddenly realising they hadn't thought of that. Of course her mother would want to see where she lived, and there wasn't a single thing in there to indicate it was occupied by two people. Rosie had come back out of the boat's main cabin and caught the exchange. She locked eyes with Lucy now and gave her a reassuring smile. I got it, she mouthed, and Lucy knew by the time she'd settled Justine in her suite, at least half of Bryce's belongings would have been relocated to her room and arranged to make it look as though he'd been living there for weeks. Welcome to Sunfish Island Resort, Jill announced as Bryce leaped across to the dock to tie off the mooring lines. If you'll follow me, we'll head up to reception to get you all checked in, so you can start enjoying your holiday straight away. Not you, Lucy said to Justine. I already checked you in. She held up a keycard with a smile. No need to queue with the hoi polloi. Oh, that was thoughtful, darling. Thank you. Goodness me, it's hot. Now that the boat had stopped moving, the oppressive tropical heat descended on them. Lucy was slowly getting used to it, but particularly humid days still got to her, her skin feeling constantly damp and her hair frizzing heavily. 
She'd taken to braiding it and coiling it atop her head to keep the weight of it off her neck. A lot of the women on the staff kept their hair short, but Lucy was a little vain about her hair and didn't want to cut it. There'll be a storm later this afternoon, she predicted. We get them most days in the summer, but it doesn't really cool things down anyway. I did warn you that you were coming during the hot season. Apparently midwinter here is much nicer, like the really good bits of an English summer. Yes, but midwinter here is the same time as the English summer, Justine pointed out. Which is quite likely to be wet and wany anyway, Lucy reposted. Anyway, the heat takes some getting used to. You need to drink a lot of water. I had a permanent headache for the first couple of weeks, until I figured out I was constantly a bit dehydrated. Now I carry a water bottle with me everywhere and refill it whenever I get the chance. Hmm. Justine claimed her suitcase from the pile the deckhand was unloading onto the dock. I was rather thinking I'd be drinking a lot of pina coladas and strawberry daiquiris, actually. Lucy snickered. Yeah, well, I set up a bar tab for your room. You'll get staff rates on all food and drinks at the resort restaurants and bars. Such a considerate daughter. Justine smiled warmly at her. Do let me get that for you, Justine, Bryce said cheerfully, gesturing at her suitcase as they came up alongside him on the dock. And such a nice considerate man you've found. Thank you, Bryce. Justine gave him the handle, and she and Lucy followed him as he strode off towards the main resort. Well, Justine murmured, lowering her sunglasses to take a good look over them at Bryce's retreating back. Now that's what I call an arse worth chasing. Lucy choked. Justine glanced sideways at her. Oh, come on, darling. I was beginning to wonder if you were interested in sex at all. Frankly, I'm relieved to discover your libido is alive and well, and that you not only have good taste, but the initiative to act on it once you see something you want. I'm not sure you need to marry him to get what you want, though. Is this some sort of strange reverse why buy the cow if you're getting the milk for free speech? Lucy asked after a moment of stunned silence. Because my relationship with Bryce isn't just about sex. She'd almost said she wasn't even having sex with Bryce, but managed to stop herself in time. Justine laughed. An amusing role reversal, isn't it? She said no more as they approached the main resort building, leaving Lucy silently fuming. Even when Justine gave a compliment, there would be a sting in the tail. She was like a jellyfish, beautiful but agonisingly painful if you got caught in its tendrils. Chapter 8 Wow, Bryce said at last, as he and Lucy stood facing each other outside the closed door to Justine's suite. Lucy arched a cynical eyebrow at him. Most men have that sort of reaction to Justine, strangely enough. That wasn't a good wow. He reached for her hand and they walked back to the elevator together. That was a wow, your mother is a real piece of work, wow. You think? Lucy darted a sideways look at him, wondering what he meant. Men young and old tended to be so blinded by Justine's beauty they didn't notice her bitchiness. I don't mean to disrespect your mother, but she was an absolute bitch to you. Bryce looked furious on her behalf and Lucy melted. Same shit, different day, she said with a shrug. I was always a disappointment from the day my father decided to deny paternity before I was even born. Maybe she could have overlooked that if I'd been the perfect little mini-me she wanted, but I wasn't. I was a sickly baby, demanding and difficult, and then I grew up far more interested in shells and starfish than clothes and makeup. I know about being a disappointment. Bryce's hand tightened on hers as the elevator doors opened and they stepped into the empty car. Even so, denigrating you right to your face, in front of your friends, that's pretty low. Suddenly my reasoning for wanting to present her with a fiancé seems quite sensible, huh? Damn right it does. Turning to her, he took her other hand so that he held them both and looked earnestly into her eyes. I've no doubt she's been putting you down your whole life, but please believe me, Lucy. 
You're brilliant and funny and just as beautiful as your mother, more so because you have a beautiful soul. I've never heard you say a truly unkind word about anyone, not even your mother, who certainly deserves it. Her smile was a little bit wobbly as she gazed back up at him. Believe me, sometimes Justine pushes me too far. I have no doubt I'll be venting in your ear at some point and tarnishing that image you have of my beautiful soul. Never, Bryce said softly, and Lucy had the strangest impression that he was leaning down towards her, just a little bit. His gaze lowered slightly. Is he looking at my lips? Instinctively she licked them, and Bryce leaned closer still. Lucy. It was a soft breath against her lips, and she angled her face up, eyes drifting closed. He's going to kiss me. Warm lips slanted down over hers, and she parted instinctively for him, breath coming quickly as the tip of his tongue traced lightly over her upper lip. A loud ping shattered the moment as the elevator doors slid open on the hotel lobby and Jill's speculative expression. Face burning, Lucy sprang back, yanking her hands from Bryce's grip. Thanks for helping Mum with her case, she gabbled quickly. I'm just going to get her a couple of water bottles to put in her fridge, make sure she drinks plenty. I'll see how she's doing with the jet lag. She might just want a room service dinner and an early night. But if she wants to eat out, I'll text you, and maybe you can join us. Her words were falling all over each other, but Bryce just nodded, giving her a warm smile before stepping back and making his escape. Jill was giving her a very knowing look as she escorted two VIP clients into the elevator. Deets later, she hissed at Lucy, just before the doors slid closed. Bryce could still taste Lucy on his lips as he headed back to his cabin, where he found Rosie and Corey hastily shoving his belongings into bags. Uh, am I moving? He arched a brow, leaning in the doorway to watch. Yes, because Lucy's mother is going to want to see where you two live, and it's going to be pretty damn obvious you're not living together if none of your shit is in her room. Rosie never slowed her speedy packing, and Corey didn't even look up. Realising she was right, Bryce blew out his cheeks and went to join them. So I'm moving in with her, am I? Her cabin's nicer than yours, Corey said with a sideways grin at him. She's got pictures up on the walls and everything. Bryce supposed his room did look a bit bare. He'd never really thought of it as more than a place to lay his head when he needed to sleep, though, preferring to be outside or spending time with friends. His favourite place in the cabin was actually the hammock outside on the deck, which he paused to unhitch before following Rosie and Corey, laden with bags, off to Lucy's cabin. The three of them spent a hasty half-hour arranging things in Lucy's cabin, which Bryce had never seen, and had to admit it was a lot nicer than his, despite having the same basic layout. Lucy had several framed pictures of ocean life on the walls, soft cushions on her couch, a woven silk throw on the bed, all the little things that made it look like a home. They'd just finished reorganising Lucy's wardrobe to have Bryce's clothes fit in alongside hers when his phone vibrated with an incoming text. It's Lucy, he said, checking it. Mum wants a drink. Meet you at the pool bar? Text her back. Tell her to meet you here, Corey suggested. Good plan, Bryce agreed. He'd long since figured the easiest way for him to send texts was to use his phone's virtual assistant, so he quickly dictated a return message. Cool. Swing by our room on your way down. Gotcha, followed by a smiley face emoji, came through a few seconds later, and he knew Lucy had received the message loud and clear. You two better scarper, he told Corey and Rosie. Thanks for all the help. You're welcome he was told as they made themselves scarce. Looking around, he couldn't see anything out of place. The cabin looked as though it was occupied by a couple, his toothbrush in a glass beside Lucy's in the bathroom, the nightstands beside the bed arranged into his and hers, with several books piled on her side and his dive computer on his. The only thing he had left to do was put up his hammock, and he hurried out onto the veranda to do that now, hoping the hooks on his were duplicated here. They were, and he was laying at his ease, 
one foot brushing the floor pushing him in a gentle swing, when Lucy and Justine came strolling down the path. Well, this looks very comfortable, Justine said, amused, as Bryce lifted his hand in a lazy wave. Hey, it's my day off, he said equably. Wasn't technically on duty this morning, but I figured I might as well come in with Lucy to meet you. I'm taking out a night dive tonight. Pushing himself up to his feet, he stretched luxuriantly before bending to kiss Lucy. I'll just grab my thongs. Thongs? he heard Justine exclaim as he slid the screen door open to enter the cabin and chuckled to himself. That's what Aussies call flip-flops, Lucy explained, following him in. While they technically speak English, there are some weird colloquialisms that take a bit of getting used to. Justine stood in the doorway, looking around, taking in the space. While the cabins were fairly generous for one person, they were cosy at best for two permanent residents. Bryce had deliberately left the discarded T-shirt draped over the bedpost, and Lucy picked it up, gave him an admonishing look, and took it to the closet to put away. Sorry, sweetie, he said with a penitent smile, shoving his feet into his rubber thongs. I'm still getting used to sharing my space he told Justine. I'd been living on my own for quite a while before Lucy swept me off my feet. Lucy chuckled at that and nudged him in the ribs. He threw his arm around her shoulders to hug her close. Don't deny it. You took one look and decided I was the one for you. He's full of it, isn't he? Justine said, but she was laughing as she spoke, and Lucy laughed too. To be honest, he's not far wrong, she admitted. I mean, look at him. Both women looked him up and down, making Bryce grin. When you're done objectifying me, ladies, I can hear a cold beer calling my name, he said cheerfully. And I'm sure I heard you say something about a pina colada, Justine. Our bartender buddy Nessa makes the best one on the reef. She's English too, a Londoner originally, though she emigrated out here when she was in her teens. Is she used to this heat yet? Justine asked as they ambled from the cabin towards the pool bar, Bryce's arm still slung casually around Lucy's shoulders. It's like walking around in a steam bath. It's summertime, even the locals are feeling it, Bryce told her. Hence the desire for a cold beer. Just the one, though, sadly, since I'm diving later. They exited the staff accommodation area through a gate leading out onto the resort's main paths and from there it was only a minute's walk to the pool bar, where Nessa was shaking cocktails with eye-blurring speed. Hey, the bartender called as they took seats at one side of the bar. Her long black braids swung as she replaced bottles on the shelf and almost danced over to them, teeth shining white in her dark face as she smiled widely. You must be Lucy's mum. Delighted to meet you. What can I get for you? They ordered drinks and watched Nessa mix the cocktails. She made it look like an art form, hands flashing as she deftly twirled bottles and blended ingredients. Pouring the cocktail into a tall, frosted glass in front of Justine, she garnished it with a flourish, a piece of pineapple and a cherry on a skewer. Wow, Justine said, obviously impressed. Nessa grinned at her before setting a long-necked bottle of beer in front of Lucy and another for Bryce. Glass. Nessa checked, and Lucy nodded. Watching her from the corner of his eye, Bryce nodded as well. He'd seen Lucy drink from the bottle plenty of times, but perhaps Justine disapproved, in which case he'd make sure he minded his manners as well. Frankly, he didn't care either way, as long as the beer was cold. All right, Justine said when she was about halfway down her cocktail. Hit me with it. Why are you getting married in such a rush? Are you pregnant? Lucy snorted beer out her nose onto the bar. Bryce had to choke down his laughter, biting down hard on the inside of his cheek. He caught Nessa's eye as she came over and had to look away, seeing her fighting not to laugh as well. Justine's question had been quite loud. No! Lucy gasped, grabbing the napkins Nessa swiftly deposited in front of her and wiping her nose with them. Christ, Mum! Seriously? Just asking, dear, Justine sipped at her cocktail, unperturbed. I wouldn't be upset. You know I'm longing for grandchildren. Don't make me wait too long, dear. She turned to Bryce. 
How are those swimmers? Nice and healthy? I hope diving doesn't affect sperm production. All those changes in pressure. He gave up the effort and burst out laughing. Just kill me now, Lucy groaned, face beat red. Justine rolled her eyes. Lucinda Marie Manning, I didn't raise you to be a prude. The two of you have clearly been banging on every available surface for some time. You're in your thirties now, after all. I just don't want you to waste time. Take it from me. Have children while you're young. Then you've still got plenty of life left to live once they've grown up and flown from the nest. Clearly you're a fine example of practising what you preach, Bryce said, since Lucy appeared to have swallowed her tongue. Of course. I'm glad Lucy waited longer than I did, but childbearing years don't last forever. Nessa, darling, would you make me another one of those? It was absolutely marvellous. Coming right up. Nessa had given up any pretense of not eavesdropping after wiping Lucy's beer snort off the bar. She made Justine's cocktail and delivered it with a flourish before quite blatantly hanging around to listen in. Justine's eye was caught by light reflecting off something hanging around Nessa's neck. I say, is that real? She squinted at the diamond glittering blue fire from the ring on a thin gold chain. My engagement ring? Nessa lifted her hand to lightly touch the ring. Yes. I don't wear it working behind the bar, though. Too many glasses to scratch. Obviously, your fiancé values you highly. Justine assessed the ring with an experienced eye before glancing back down at Lucy's simpler, though still high-value ring, and wrinkling her nose slightly. I chose this, Lucy jumped to Bryce's defence. I wanted something I can wear at work. Also, competing with Nessa's fiancé is a losing proposition, Bryce added, amused by Justine's attempted put-down. She's marrying a billionaire, after all. It was Justine's turn to choke on her drink. Nessa laughed out loud. Nessa's engaged to Jace Hunter. He owns the island, Lucy explained. And yes, I could give up working at the bar if I wanted, but I enjoy it, Nessa said, when Justine gave her an incredulous look. Jace is a very private person, but I like human contact. A few shifts a week here suits me fine. Well... Justine recovered her composure. I'm sure you know your own mind. Congratulations, she added as an afterthought. When's your wedding? Nessa shrugged. When we get around to it. No rush. Her grin was absolutely wicked. I'm a few years younger than Lucy, so I've got a couple extra childbearing years up my sleeve. And to think, I thought you were my friend, Lucy said dryly making Nessa laugh again. Chapter 9 Justine mellowed out after another cocktail, and somehow they managed to escape without directly answering the question about why they were in such a hurry to get married. Finally, Justine declared that the jet lag was catching up with her, and she was going to go rest for a while before meeting them for dinner at the Italian restaurant in the main hotel building. And over dinner, you must tell me all about your family, Bryce. Justine declared. Won't that be fun? Bryce muttered under his breath. Lucy squeezed his hand and he mustered up a smile. We'll walk back with you part of the way, Lucy said. When we turn in through the staff gate, you just carry straight on into the main resort reception. You can't get lost. Draining the last of his beer, Bryce set the glass down and thanked Nessa. She gave him a warm smile and a wink as she efficiently cleared away the empty glasses. Lucy's hand slipped into his again as they walked away from the bar, and Bryce thought briefly about how natural it felt to hold her hand now. He knew he was still going to be reaching out to take her hand instinctively long after Justine had gone home, which was likely to lead to a few awkward moments. All right, I'll see you two lovebirds later, Justine said as they arrived at the staff gate. No doubt you can think of something to do to fill in your afternoon, she winked at Bryce. She thinks we're going to have sex, Bryce realised, and told himself firmly not to blush. Lucy was already doing enough of that for both of them. Any time I get to spend with Lucy is a gift, he said, knowing it was a sappy line, but sure Justine would eat it up. 
She gave him an amused look before turning on her heel and heading for the main resort building. Lucy sagged against Bryce as soon as her mother was out of sight. Hey. Letting go of her hand, he put a bracing arm around her shoulders instead. Come on. You're doing great. She's fallen for it, hook, line and sinker. She's been here for two hours, Lucy bemoaned as he opened the gate. I've got to survive two weeks of this. We'll survive it together. They reached her cabin and Bryce hesitated. What do you want me to do here? Rosie basically moved me in with you. Lucy chuckled, shaking her head. Bless her. I thought she was just going to make it look good. On the other hand, Justine is the kind of person who would feel completely entitled to look in any drawer or cupboard she felt like, so maybe it's for the best. It's not going to be terribly convenient for you if I'm walking in every ten minutes to get a change of clothes or brush my teeth, though, Bryce pointed out. Well, you could just stay here, Lucy said, opening the cabin door and gesturing to him to enter. A dead silence fell between them as Bryce stared at her. Ah, uh, Lucy, he said hesitantly. Platonically, I mean, I'm not going to jump on you. It's a queen-size bed. She was babbling. Bryce stared at her, wondering what the hell was going through her mind. I'm not going to jump on you either, he said slowly. At least, not when I'm awake, but when I'm asleep. Well, I don't think I'd jump on you then either. But how would you react if, for example, you woke up with me shoving my morning wood against your backside? Lucy's eyes widened, and then she let out a giggle of shock. Bryce! I'm sorry, but it's a natural thing. I wake up most mornings hard as a rock. He shrugged. Nothing I can do about it until after I've woken up. Lucy's pale cheeks took on a deeper hue, and she dropped her gaze before murmuring. Well, maybe I could give you a hand with that. She could not possibly mean what he almost desperately wanted to believe she did. Shocked, Bryce stared at her, not at all sure what to say. For a moment there was complete silence in the cabin, which suddenly seemed a lot smaller than it had before. Did you seriously just offer to give me a morning hand job? he blurted out finally. Lucy's lips twitched, and then she began to laugh, almost hysterically. Flopping down on the bed, she giggled madly, rolling up into a ball, grabbing her pillow to muffle her chuckles and snorts. Okay, I think today's been a bit much for you, Bryce said realising she was overwrought. Gingerly, he sat down on the bed beside her, reached out to smooth his hand over her hair. She grabbed onto his hand and clutched it as though he'd thrown her a lifeline, still laughing, but now with tears streaming down her cheeks. Lucy, take a breath, sweetheart. It's okay. Everything's going to be okay. He ended up lying down with her in his arms, her small fists knotted in the fabric of his T-shirt, his hands stroking her back in a soothing, steady rhythm while she hiccuped and giggled against his chest. Trying to calm her, he began to hum softly under his breath after racking his brain to think of something slow and gentle. Finally, Lucy's heaving breath settled, her hiccups and giggles fading away. I'm sorry, she mumbled finally into Bryce's shirt. Don't be. He never slowed his gentle stroking of her back. Was that Simon and Garfunkel? He couldn't help but smile, though she wouldn't see it with her head tucked under his chin. Only you, Lucy Manning, would retain enough presence of mind to identify a song while in the midst of a panic attack. It wasn't a panic attack. Just a, a minor breakdown. You're so full of shit. It's okay to admit your mother can drive you to panic attacks. How about we create some sort of signal we can use, which you can give me to let me know you need to get out and get some space to get yourself back together? She didn't say anything, but she did nod against his chest. A signal word? Bryce pushed. How about Cecilia? Lucy suggested after a moment. See, I knew you were a Simon and Garfunkel fan, really. Her tight grip on his shirt loosened enough for her to poke him in the ribs. I just thought it would be an easy word to work into conversation. 
far as I know, there isn't a Cecilia on staff here, but Mum won't know that. Perfect, Bryce approved. He didn't loosen his firm hold on her or slow his stroking of her back. Several long minutes of silence passed, but it didn't feel awkward. Lucy slowly relaxed against him, her hands spreading out to gently splay on his chest. Thanks, she said finally, though she didn't specify what for. Bryce figured for everything would just about cover it. You're welcome, he responded. Your mum's a piece of work, huh? He didn't make it a question. She was behaving quite well today, actually. Lucy tipped her head back to meet his eyes. She does when she has an audience of more than just me. Christ, Lucy. Instinctively, he tightened his hold, hugging her close. Is it okay for me to say I don't want you to be alone with her? That is very okay. I'll spread the word. I'm pretty sure Rosie, Nessa and the other girls will be happy to make sure you're always surrounded by a crowd. Lifting his hand to her face, he gently swept a lock of her dark brown hair back from her cheek, cupped it in his hand. How can you look so like her and yet be so different? You're one of the sweetest, nicest people I've ever met, and Justine is like a box jellyfish. Pretty to look at, but every tendril has a lethal sting. That might be the most accurate description of my mother I've ever heard. Laughter, true, genuine laughter, creased the corners of Lucy's eyes. I've been wondering all day if I was mad to have gone ahead with this plan, but right now, you being here with me is the only thing that's making her visit bearable. I'm here, and I'm staying, Bryce promised, gazing into her eyes. He was sorely tempted to kiss her right then, but it would have been an utterly dick move. Instead, he hugged her closer, pressed his cheek against the top of her head. Whatever you need, Lucy. I'm right here. She didn't say anything, but her arm slipped around him, and he felt her snuggle closer, turning her cheek against his chest. After a few minutes, her breathing slowed, and he realised she'd fallen asleep. Carefully, he tried to disengage, leave her to rest, but even in her sleep she clung close, made a discontented sound. Smiling, Bryce relaxed. If what Lucy needed was to sleep peacefully in his arms, that was what he would give her. For as long as she needed, even if that was long after Justine had left the island, he'd give Lucy whatever she wanted. Silently, as Lucy slept in his arms, Bryce admitted to himself that his feelings had gone far beyond a mere crush. While he'd admired Lucy before, spending all this time with her had only caused him to fall utterly, head over heels in love with the beautiful, brilliant, but above all kind and loving woman she was. Seeing her with Justine, the incredible contrast between two women so similar in looks but poles apart in personality had only cemented his feelings. Lucy Manning was the most incredible woman he'd ever met, and he was way, way in over his head. Chapter 10 Waking in Bryce's arms felt utterly natural and right. There was no surprise at finding the steady thump beneath her ear was his heartbeat, no concern at the warmth of his body against hers, the strength of his arms cradling her. Lucy sighed and stretched, humming a little with contentment. Feeling better? Bryce asked, his voice rich with amusement. Nana naps are literally magic, Lucy sighed in response, looking up and grinning at him. Thanks for not waking me. You needed the rest. Bryce took his sweet time letting go of her, but Lucy wished he hadn't bothered. Though the cabin was warm enough, her aircon set to a warm 24 degrees Celsius, she felt suddenly chilled with the loss of Bryce's heat. She rolled to her side and hugged a pillow, watching as he hesitated in front of the wardrobe doors. I should get changed before we go to meet your mum for dinner. Gesturing down at his board shorts and t-shirt, he smiled self-deprecatingly. This might have been okay to meet her at the airport, but she won't think much of me if I don't bother to change. Would you mind if I wash up and change? Lucy's brow furrowed until she realised he was asking if he could use her bathroom. Of course, she said at once. Yes. If we're going to share the room, Bryce, you don't even have to ask. 
unless you need to use it first. Nah, I'm good here for a few minutes. I like to wake up slowly and stretch a bit. Noted. He smiled at her before gathering some clean clothes and heading into the bathroom. The door closed, but she didn't hear the lock snick. The fact of the unlocked door held Lucy's eyes riveted to the handle. She could hear the water running, could imagine Bryce's tall, strong form slicked with water as he took a shower, the droplets running over the contours of his muscles. Following a path she couldn't help thinking about tracing with her tongue. Why hadn't he locked the door? Her hands twitched with holding them back. She wanted desperately to go and turn the handle, ease the door open just a tiny way. See if she could spy his reflection in the mirror on the opposite wall, if it hadn't fogged from the heat of the water. Oh my God, I'm turning into a voyeur. With a tiny shriek, Lucy forced herself off the bed and over to the wardrobe, grabbing randomly for a dress to wear. She'd bought a dozen or so lightweight cotton dresses since arriving and spent most of her off-duty hours in one. Selecting a navy blue one with bright fuchsia and gold tropical flowers printed on it, she hesitated, looking at Bryce's clothes hanging alongside hers. I should feel like my space is being invaded, shouldn't I? Instead, there was a feeling of comfort and domesticity about the scene. Reaching out, she lightly touched the sleeve of one of his few formal shirts, feeling the crisp fabric under her fingertips. Bathroom's free, Bryce said behind her, and she jumped about a foot in the air, letting out a startled shriek. Hell, I'm sorry. I wasn't trying to be quiet. I assumed you heard the bathroom door open. Closing her eyes, Lucy pressed one hand against the wall to steady herself. I was miles away, she admitted, unable to look at him and confess she'd been fantasizing about the two of them living in cosy domesticity forever and ever. Obviously. She heard his footsteps, even though he was barefoot, as he crossed the tile floor, coming to stand right in front of her. Opening her eyes, she peeked up at him. God, he's beautiful. Blonde hair darkened with water, tawny stubble just beginning to coarsen his chiselled jaw, Bryce looked down at her with a slight frown. Are you feeling okay, Lucy? No. My eyes feel gritty from sleep and my hair is all over the place and I desperately need a shower. Out loud, she said. I'm fine. Or I will be once I've had a shower. All right. He didn't step aside, though, to clear the path to the bathroom, just stood there looking down at her. Is he looking at my mouth? Unconsciously, Lucy licked her lips and saw, to her fascination, Bryce's pupils flare wide. We didn't talk about that kiss earlier, Bryce said, his voice lower and huskier than it had been a moment earlier. Which one? Any of them, frankly. They were all he seemed to be searching for the right word. Unexpected. Not the worst choice of words, she supposed. She knew he didn't mean he hadn't been expecting the kisses, only that he'd been surprised by his own reaction to them. Which at least answered the burning question of whether he'd been as affected as she. It's kind of difficult to talk about, Lucy admitted, because all I can think about is how much I want to kiss you again. Yeah? He didn't miss a beat, just took a step closer. I haven't stopped thinking about it either. The dress she was still holding slithered to the floor unnoticed as Lucy reached out, and Bryce met her halfway. In a moment they were clinging tightly to each other, mouths fused together, the kisses almost frantic as they both released the emotions they'd been bottling up all afternoon. Lucy jumped up and hooked her legs around Bryce's waist, unable to get close enough with the height difference between them. He groaned against her mouth, one hand sliding under her butt to support her, and then turned to carry her over to the bed. He was hard, she discovered with delight as he came down on top of her, knees between hers. Lucy ground against him with a low moan in her throat, her groin tilted against his, the heat and pressure of his arousal blissful through the thin layers of their clothes. Lucy. His growl of her name as he temporarily abandoned her mouth to start kissing down her neck brought her back to reality, much though she'd have preferred to stay floating in her blissfully sensual haze. 
it took every bit of willpower she could muster to push feebly against his shoulders and say, Bryce, stop. Bryce groaned against her throat, his rocking hips stilling. Please tell me you didn't just say that. We got her. Ugh. Rolling off her and collapsing to his back, he flung a forearm up to cover his eyes. Bryce, I'm sorry, Lucy said desperately. But we're supposed to meet Justine in fifteen minutes, and if we don't show, she's totally going to come looking for us. Ed wouldn't reinforce our story if she happened to catch us going at it, then. He cracked a smile, though he didn't uncover his eyes to look at her. Go take a shower, Luce. I'm just going to lie here and think about ice water baths for a while. He needed to. She couldn't resist a look as she rolled off the bed and headed for the bathroom. His erection was tenting the lightweight fabric of his car keys. If only we had time. Then what? Lucy asked herself aloud as she stepped under the shower spray. She deliberately hadn't waited for it to warm back up. Her overheated body needed cooling down as well. Were we really on the verge of having sex? It wasn't as though Bryce could fake his body's reaction. He'd most definitely been up for it, and considering the way he'd groaned her name, very much aware of where he was and who with. Oh God, I need to stop thinking about it. She was wet between her legs, and thinking about how hard and hot Bryce had felt against her, the delicious friction she'd found rocking against his thick erection, really wasn't helping the situation. Grabbing the mixer tap, she turned the temperature lower again and reached for the soap. She just wished she could wash her dirty mind as easily as her body. Bryce wasn't in the room when she left the bathroom. Stepping into her shoes, Lucy opened the sliding door, guessing she might find him in his hammock outside. She'd walked past his cabin many times and seen him relaxing there. He looked up at her as she stepped outside. One foot on the floor pushed him back and forth in an idle swinging motion, the hammock creaking quietly. Hey. Hey, Lucy said in return, feeling suddenly awkward. Unsure exactly what to say to him now, she stood nibbling on a hangnail. Hungry? Bryce stilled before pushing to his feet in a single graceful movement. Because I'm starved. He reached for her hand as though it was the most natural thing in the world, and Lucy let him take it. Yeah, I'm hungry, she agreed. I was too nervous to eat at lunch. I noticed, Bryce said, with a gentle squeeze to her fingers. Probably why two cocktails put you right to sleep. That, and the fact that I haven't slept much the last three nights. Lucy said dryly as they made their way to the main resort building. Don't let her get under your skin, Lucy, Bryce told her. Listen to me. You're a beautiful, brilliant woman. You've got a good job in an idyllic location and, he slid her a cheeky grin, a hot younger man just dying to fulfil your every sexual fantasy. Lucy chuckled as he'd obviously meant her to. I guess, when you put it that way. You've got nothing to be ashamed of. Quite the opposite. So lift your head up and own it, girl. Justine ain't got nothing on you. When you look at me like that, Lucy said softly, I almost believe it. He stopped walking right outside the restaurant entrance, framed her face between his big hands and kissed her. Believe it. Lips still tingling from the kiss, Lucy let Bryce lead her inside. Justine wasn't there yet, which didn't surprise her. Justine always loved to make an entrance. One of seven restaurants on the island, this was one of the largest, with an Italian-themed buffet every night. She didn't know the waitress who came up to them with a cheerful smile, but Bryce obviously did. Hey, Nina. Hi, Bryce. Eating here instead of the staff dining room? She gave him a puzzled look. Though they received a discount, staff had to pay to eat in the resort's public restaurants, whereas the staff dining room was always free. Lucy's mother arrived today, Bryce said. Ah. Nina's tone made it clear she knew all about their wedding deception. She gave Lucy a slightly disparaging look up and down, though her tone was friendly enough. I'll give you one of the booths and bring her over when she arrives. Thanks, hun. 
Anything to drink? Nina checked as she seated them. Not for me. I'm heading out for the night dive in an hour. Justine will probably want wine, so I'll share a bottle with her, but I'll wait and let her choose it, Lucy said. Well, wave me down if you change your mind, or if there's anything else you want. Nina's smile at Bryce was boldly inviting, and Lucy found herself clenching her fists under the table. The other girl was perfectly entitled to flirt, she told herself. After all, as far as Nina knew, Bryce was just helping her out while her mother was visiting. He was single, and therefore fair game. Lucy still wanted to scratch her eyes out. Chapter 11 Justine certainly knew how to make an entrance, Bryce thought. She timed it perfectly, waiting until the space between the buffet and the door was clear, before stepping forward and pausing, looking around as though she couldn't find them, even though they were almost directly opposite her. One poor guy at the buffet dropped his plate, which shattered into a thousand pieces and broke the sudden startled silence which had fallen. Nina and another waitress at once hurried over to clean up, the man hastily retreating, tripping over a chair as he gazed open-mouthed at Justine. All around the restaurant men, and not a few women, were staring. Justine had dressed to kill in a slinky dress of pale silver satin, cut diagonally off one shoulder and slit well up her thigh on the opposite side. Holy shit, that's Justine Manning, a man said in the booth beside them, his tone awed, and Bryce saw Lucy wince. It was at that moment he realised he'd never asked what her mother did for a living. She's an actress, Lucy muttered, when he leaned across to quietly murmur the question in her ear. She plays a femme fatale on one of the longest-running British soaps. That explained quite a lot, including why Justine looked so impeccably groomed. Her black hair shone, falling just past her shoulders in glossy waves, pinned up on one side with a deep red flower. Lips painted the same colour as the flower, she smiled as several people approached her to ask if they might have autographs or selfies. I'm here visiting my daughter, Justine said loudly as one fan asked eagerly why she was on the island. She's one of the resident marine biologists. Come over here, Lucy darling. Bryce followed as Lucy got up, the look on her face making it clear she was reluctant to enter the limelight. I had no idea you had a daughter, the woman talking to Justine gushed as Lucy approached. No, this can't possibly be your daughter. You're not old enough. You're so sweet. Justine's laugh was like little silver bells, all tinkling razor shards, Bryce thought. Lucy seemed to shrink into herself as Justine wrapped an arm around her shoulders. I'm very proud of Lucy. She's terribly smart. And she's getting married next week, which is why I'm here, of course. Of course, they had to get married during a break in filming, the woman nodded, looking from Lucy to Bryce with a smile. Congratulations! Thank you, Lucy muttered. Somehow, Justine had managed to make a wedding she hadn't even known about that morning all about her, Bryce thought with an exasperated shake of his head. She was certainly comfortable in the limelight, expertly handling the fans who came up, excusing herself after a few minutes with a tinkling little laugh. I'm starving, my dears. I'm staying for two weeks. No doubt you'll see me around. As though by magic, the little crowd of British tourists who'd gathered around her dissipated, and Justine sashayed over to the booth where Lucy and Bryce had retreated. Sorry about that, darling. She glanced at the empty seat opposite them with a little pout of her lips but then seemed to accept she couldn't really ask Lucy to move so she could sit beside Bryce. Taking her seat, she looked at their water glasses. Not drinking? I've got to take out a night dive, Bryce explained. I'll have a quick dinner with you, but then I'm afraid I'll have to excuse myself. Oh, what a shame. What about you, Lucy? I was waiting for you. Thought you'd like to choose some wine, Lucy explained and Justine seemed pleased by her thoughtfulness. Dinner passed pleasantly enough. Justine, like Lucy, had a healthy appetite, though Bryce noted she watched Lucy's plate and made sure to eat just a little less. Even in this, she was competing with her daughter. 
To Bryce, despite Justine's show-stopping appearance, there was no comparison. One was all show, and the other had the substance. This close, he could see how Justine's artfully applied makeup enhanced her features, and it occurred to him that at least some of her incredibly youthful appearance might be due to Botox or plastic surgery. She looked too smooth, almost plastic, especially compared to Lucy's fresh, natural appearance. He'd never seen Lucy wear any other makeup than lip gloss. She really didn't need it, her lightly tanned skin flawlessly smooth, her lashes long and dark, soft lips kissably pink, drawing his gaze inevitably and making him think about their earlier kisses again. He could see Lucy didn't feel she came off well in comparisons to her mother, though, and vowed to do his best to reassure her later. He hated to leave the two of them alone, Certain Justine would be much more bitchy to Lucy once she had her on her own than she would in front of him. So he was very grateful when Luke entered the restaurant about five minutes before Bryce would have to leave, coming up to their table with a broad smile. Hey, Lucy, Bryce, and this must be our newest celebrity guest. Justine preened as Luke turned his considerable charm on her. Standing up, she let him take her hand, bowing over it gallantly. Lucy didn't mention you were THE Justine Manning. I just found out from the resort's Instagram feed going crazy, Luke said wryly, and Bryce was suddenly quite certain Luke hadn't a clue who she was. He'd probably googled her hastily before coming to the restaurant. Well, it's not like I'm here to perform. Justine flicked her eyes towards Lucy, who hastily rose and made the introductions, presenting Luke as the resort's general manager. Luke's also officiating at our wedding, Bryce put in, thinking that was worth mentioning. Though Sunfish has a full-time celebrant, she's away next week, so Luke agreed to stand in for us. Happy to do it, Luke said heartily, putting a hand on Bryce's shoulder. I've never seen a couple so in love, have you? he asked Justine. They can't keep their hands off each other, that's for sure, Justine said with her tinkling little laugh and Bryce was suddenly struck by a flash of inspiration. Are you busy, Luke? Because I'm about to head out with the night dive, and I'd appreciate it if you'd stand in for me and keep Justine and Lucy company for a while. I'd be delighted, Luke said warmly, and Justine brightened. Do sit down. She slid over and patted the vacated seat beside her. The look she skimmed over Luke was positively acquisitive, and Bryce felt briefly sorry for his boss. But then, Luke was a grown man and could look after himself. I'll walk out with you, Lucy said as Bryce made his apologies. Her hand felt cold as her fingers curled around his, and he held on to them firmly as they left the restaurant. You okay? he asked quietly, once they were out of earshot. Yeah, I forgot how difficult it is to go out with her in public. Lucy grimaced slightly. That was only a fraction of the attention she gets in England, of course. I can imagine. He could also see how Justine basked in it, manipulating the limelight to push Lucy ever further into her shadow. With a quick glance over his shoulder to check they were still visible from the booth where Justine and Luke now sat, Bryce drew Lucy to a halt. You've managed her awesomely so far. And Luke's smart enough to spot the signals if you need to let him know you don't want to be alone with Justine. You've been so amazing, Lucy said earnestly, staring up at him. Thank you so much. Bryce ducked his head a little bashfully. It's nothing. He flicked another glance back at the booth, saw Justine watching them. And since she's watching, I think we should give her something to stare at. I'm going to kiss you now, okay? Uh, Lucy said intelligently. Uh, yeah, that's okay. Bryce's arm curled around her waist and he bent his head slowly, obviously giving her time to back off if she changed her mind. Not that Lucy could imagine any reason she might ever want to not kiss Bryce. Even if he hadn't already proven himself to be an exceptional kisser, he was, well, Bryce. She tilted her face up, eyes drifting closed and lips parting instinctively. Fuck, you're beautiful, Bryce muttered gruffly, 
and Lucy's eyes flew open again briefly just as he kissed her. Did he really mean that? Growing up in her mother's shadow, Lucy had always been the ugly duckling. Intellectually, she knew she was passably pretty at least, but the way Bryce looked at her, the way he kissed her, made her feel beautiful for the first time in her life. She swayed towards him as he broke the kiss, wanting more, wanting to feel that way again, and Bryce muttered a curse under his breath. I'll see you later, he said before kissing her again, a little rougher this time, a little deeper. Lucy's lips were tingling as she returned to the dinner table, flags of scarlet colour flying high on her cheeks. Justine had already looked away, was focusing all her attention on Luke. Lucy wondered if she'd have to warn him off. Luke was far too nice to get caught in Justine's web, but decided he could take care of himself when he shot her a surreptitious wink at one point. They were all playing their parts, and Justine, the professional actress, hadn't the slightest idea. Oh, the delicious irony. The sensation of victory carried Lucy through the rest of the dinner, and thankfully immediately afterwards, Justine admitted jet lag was making her tired. Get some sleep, Mum. I'll meet you in the morning, take you on a tour of the island. Say nine o'clock? Give you time to have some breakfast first. I'll meet you in the main lobby, by the information desk. Sounds lovely, darling. Justine air-kissed both her cheeks. Good night. Lovely to meet you, Justine. Luke gave her a warm smile. See you again soon, I hope. You can count on it. She gave him a sultry look before turning on her heel and heading for the elevators. Luke blew out his cheeks as he watched her go before shooting Lucy a wry look. If I hadn't been forewarned that your mother was a difficult type, I might be trailing along behind her with my tongue hanging out right about now. Please don't fall for her, Lucy begged earnestly. You're much, much too nice. No fear, hun. I am married to my job. Luke smiled, the corners of his eyes crinkling. Besides, I can hardly have a strict policy of no involvement between staff and guests if I don't follow it myself, can I? Great leaders lead by example, Lucy murmured. Since you don't actually work for me, I'll take that as the compliment it is. Luke nodded his head to her gravely. We're here for you, Lucy. I wondered when you first came to me why you were doing this, but I think I understand a little better now. Don't let Justine get under your skin, huh? It's only two weeks, and you'll have plenty to distract her with. You mean Bryce and the wedding? Luke's grin was wicked. Sick Terry and Jerome on her. And Olivia. No doubt Olivia will know how to put a good PR spin on one of Britain's biggest soap stars holidaying here. Lucy wrinkled her nose. Undoubtedly. I just know Justine will want to make our wedding all about her. Luke looked at her oddly. Your fake wedding. Hmm? Your fake wedding, Lucy. You're not really getting married, remember? Oh. Feeling a scalding blush start crawling up her cheeks, Lucy started babbling. Well, of course I hadn't forgotten. It's just so easy to get lost in all the little details. Even though Terry and Jerome are absolute stars at organising things, all they do is show me ideas for approval. This is the most wonderful practice for if I ever do get married. Luke's expression was decidedly cynical as he looked at her, but he nodded and said nothing, a small smile lifting the corners of his lips. Well, you can count on my support, whatever you need. Thank you so much. Lucy said again as he smiled and left her. It was a shame Luke didn't have a romantic interest of his own, she thought. Not that she would wish Justine on anyone, much less a man she liked so much. Chapter 12 It was well after midnight when Bryce walked wearily back into the staff area and hesitated at a fork in the path. Going back to his cabin seemed pointless, since there was almost nothing of his there, not even his toothbrush but going to Lucy's felt kind of presumptuous. She was probably asleep anyway, and he definitely didn't want to wake her. The way she'd fallen asleep on him that afternoon spoke of nights she'd spent awake worrying. He'd go by her cabin and see, he decided after a moment. 
If she was awake, he could just grab his toothbrush and a change of clothes and then go back to his place to sleep. There were no lights on in Lucy's cabin and Bryce's shoulders sagged. Well, he could still get a shower and just sleep in the nude, he supposed. They hadn't stripped his old bed, at least. He was turning to walk away when a voice said his name softly. Lucy? He turned back, squinting. Here. She was in his hammock, he realised as she lifted her hand, a tiny citronella candle burning on the rail beside her to keep the mosquitoes at bay. You should be resting. Walking up alongside her, he looked down, trying to make out her expression. She was on the wrong side of the cabin for the bright moonlight to illuminate her features, and the candle's glow was too small to be helpful. Couldn't sleep. How was the dive? Nothing out of the ordinary. How was your evening after I left? Did Luke stay? He did, and he was wonderful. She sat up, lurching to try and get out of the hammock, giggling as it swung wildly. Bryce chuckled along with her, leaning down to grab her and lift her to her feet. She clung to his shoulders, gripping the snug material of his T-shirt, clinging to slightly damp skin. I came to pick up my toothbrush and some clean clothes, Bryce said after a moment of tense, singing silence. You have to sleep here, Lucy blurted, and he raised his eyebrows. Excuse me? Justine went to bed early. Jet lag. She's quite likely to be up at the crack of dawn and perfectly selfish enough to come looking for me. If she finds you not sleeping here, well... All the hard work we put in today would be wasted, wouldn't it? Lucy. He stopped after the single word, stalling out. Then restarted again. After earlier, is that a good idea? Earlier? Yes, earlier, when we damn near ripped each other's clothes off. Oh, that. They were almost nose to nose. Bryce's hands shook with the effort of not reaching for her not grabbing her and dragging her hard against him. I want you, he said raggedly. I've spent damn near every minute since that kiss here earlier thinking about it, thinking about you, about how much I didn't want to stop. The silence seemed to go on forever. Bryce died a little inside as Lucy just stared at him wide-eyed. And then she said, So this time, let's not stop. This is going to complicate things, Bryce thought, as Lucy's arms wrapped around his neck and she pulled his head down. But then her soft lips pressed against his, and he stopped thinking about anything except the way she tasted. Chapter 13 Yoo-hoo, darling! Lucy! Fuck! Lucy sat bolt upright, clutching the sheet to her bare breasts. Despite making the excuse to Bryce the previous night to convince him to stay, she hadn't really thought her mother would come looking for her at some unearthly hour. Glancing at the clock by the bed, though, she groaned. It wasn't early. It was ten past nine, and she'd told Justine she'd meet her at nine in the lobby to take her on a tour of the island. Hmm? Beside her, Bryce rolled closer, an arm curling around her waist and pulling her towards him. Is it morning already? Good. I can ravish you again. She spared a few seconds to appreciate how he looked, all rumpled in the warm light of morning, his hair shining gold, blue eyes peering up at her as he tried to pull her down for a kiss. My mother's here, she hissed. Don't want to walk in on anything, darling, Justine said loudly from outside the door. Did you oversleep, or did that gorgeous man of yours just not let you out of bed on time? Sorry, Justine. Bryce called back after a moment as Lucy fled for the bathroom. My fault. Lost track of the time. I kept her up late, too. Naughty boy, Justine said playfully and slid the door open. Bryce made sure the sheet was covering his hips before lying back and putting his hands behind his head, feigning a casualness he didn't feel. Justine just stood and surveyed him for a moment, a smile on her perfectly painted lips. Even this early in the morning, she was fully made up, large designer sunglasses perched atop her glossy hair, wearing a white silk blouse with large pink flowers printed on it, 
and white designer capri pants. And white high-heeled sandals, Bryce noted, willing himself not to laugh at how ridiculously overdressed she looked. She could have just stepped off a film set or a yacht in Saint-Tropez. Hey, Mum! The bathroom door slid open and Lucy emerged, putting the final couple of twists in her simple braid before wrapping a tie around the end. Be right with you. I just need to put sunscreen on. The contrast couldn't be more extreme between mother and daughter. Lucy looked surprisingly fresh. Bryce suspected she'd just splashed cold water on her face, her eyes sparkling, cheeks glowing. She wore a strappy pale blue cotton sundress and stepped into a pair of old rubber flip-flops as he watched. Are you wearing sunscreen? Lucy checked as she grabbed the bottle sitting on the dresser and squeezed some onto her hands. Otherwise you're going to fry. My moisturiser is SPF 30, darling, Justine dismissed. That probably won't be enough. I'll bring the bottle. With a glance at Bryce, Lucy said brightly, Will you put some on my back? Of course. He patted the bed between his thighs, accepted the bottle as she sat down. Took his time massaging the thick sunscreen into her shoulders and upper back, ignoring Justine entirely. There, he murmured at last, leaning forward to nibble her ear. Enjoy your morning. I'll catch up with you for lunch. Got an afternoon dive leaving at two. Lunch sounds good. Lucy turned her head to kiss him, smiling at him gratefully. Though, after the previous night, Bryce had no idea why she might think he wouldn't go along with anything she wanted. He craved her again now, wanted to tell Justine to get lost and pull Lucy back into the bed, spend the whole morning exploring her body, the softness of her skin, the sounds she made as he made love to her. As she capped the sunscreen and got off the bed, he had to shift a knee up to hide the fact that he was tenting the sheet. Justine was pointedly ignoring the pair of them, picking up and putting down things on Lucy's dresser. Cheap moisturiser, darling, really? She held up a bottle and shook her head. I thought I taught you better than that. You tried to raise me with expensive tastes, yeah, Lucy said dryly. Considering how much of the stuff I go through in this heat, I'd be broke in a few weeks if I'd tried to use high-end stuff. That's been working for me. Justine pursed her lips and shook her head. Bryce sensed this was a regular battle between the two, and one Lucy had long since won by simply ignoring her mother's recommendations and demands. He heard Justine start up again as the two of them left, Lucy with a final wistful glance over her shoulder at Bryce still in her bed. He gave her a warm smile, and she returned it before closing the door behind them. Still tired, Bryce only gave brief thought to trying to go back to sleep. Sleeping in Lucy's bed without her felt too intrusive somehow. Pushing himself up with a regretful sigh, he headed for the shower. He'd clean up, get some food, and go prepare for the afternoon dive class. At least that would keep him busy until he could see Lucy again. Chapter 14 Lucy had spent most of her free time in the last few weeks planning activities to keep Justine as busy and engaged and therefore out of Lucy's hair, as possible. The tour of the resort in a golf buggy, pointing out all the beauties the island possessed, was just the start and occupied the rest of the morning. They caught up with Bryce for lunch at another of the resort's restaurants, this one an Asian noodle bar overlooking the beach and coral lagoon beyond. I thought you might want to rest this afternoon, so I've scheduled to go into work for a few hours, Lucy told Justine as they ate their lunch. If you don't want to sleep, you could relax by the pool, though. Justine looked dissatisfied and turned to Bryce. What about you, Bryce, dear? Are you busy? Taking out a dive at two, he said cheerfully. I'd say come along, except you shouldn't dive for 48 hours after a long flight. No, thank you anyway, Justine shuddered slightly. I don't care for being underwater. I'm proud of what Lucy does but I'll have to settle for admiring her work from above the waterline. Well, there's plenty to see at the Marine Biology Centre anyway. The stingray feedings are my favourite. Justine looked a little uncertain. Lucy chimed in again with another suggestion. Or there's always the spa. 
you've got a VIP account, which means you can jump the queue for spa bookings or even have a therapist come to your suite if you want. Watch a movie on TV and get your nails done, maybe. Now that's a good idea, Justine said with an approving nod. Then if I want to snooze, I don't even have to move. Clever girl. Bryce really didn't care for her patronising tone, and from the corner of his eye, he saw Lucy's jaw clench. Silently, he reached under the table and took her hand in his, feeling the tension in her stiff fingers. Gently, he massaged her palm with his fingertips until she relaxed again. Lucy thanked her lucky stars as she carefully loaded a batch of newly grown corals into a transport tray that her work wasn't something she could just walk away from completely for too long. For at least a couple of hours a day, she could escape Justine and lose herself in doing something which mattered to her, and today she had almost a whole day's escape. A large batch of corals was ready for replanting, and she was going out with several other staff from the Marine Biology Centre on a dive to replant them on a depleted part of the reef. Pioneered in the Caribbean, the programme was already showing great promise after only a couple of months here. Of course, the team had been growing the corals in the nursery for months before she arrived, but Lucy still felt as though every one was her baby as she directed the replanting programme. The other especially good thing about today, apart from a full day's respite from her mother, was that Bryce was assisting on the dive. She'd only climbed out of their bed an hour ago, and here he was again now, smiling down at her as he helped her load the transport trays onto the boat. I'm really looking forward to today. He voiced exactly what she was thinking, and she smiled back at him happily. Me too. She'd even fished out her best bikini for the occasion. Bryce had made a remark to Justine the day before about Lucy wearing a red bikini the first time they met. Surprised he'd remembered such a small detail, she nonetheless dug it out of a drawer and put it on, before donning her usual work uniform of blue t-shirt and khaki shorts. No sooner had the boat pulled away from the dock, everyone settling down for the hour-long trip to the replanting site, than she pulled her shirt off and cast Bryce an inviting look. Want to rub in some sunscreen for me? Temptress, he said with a laugh, pushing his sunglasses up on top of his head and taking the bottle from her hand. You're lucky there's nowhere private on this boat except for a very small toilet or you'd be about to get ravished. Yeah? Damn right. That bikini shouldn't be legal. His eyes were locked on her breasts, though they did drop lower as she removed her shorts too with a shimmy of her hips. Hot damn, Luce. You trying to give me a heart attack? From any other man, such a display of blatant lust would have given Lucy the creeps. But this was Bryce. Bryce who told her he admired her brain just as frequently as he remarked on her looks, Bryce, the most considerate man she knew. Even as he rubbed in the sunscreen, warm hands massaging her skin sensuously, he took the time to warm the cream in his hands first before putting it on her skin. You shouldn't be allowed to be brilliant and beautiful, he murmured in her ear, nibbling on her earlobe, making her shiver in sensual delight. Makes the rest of us feel inadequate. Since you can't get a room right now, Jody the boat pilot called to them then, take your hands off her before I make a citizen's arrest for indecent behaviour, Bryce Seabrook. Laughing, he lifted his hands and took a reluctant step back. Later, he told Lucy, with a dark look full of promise, before he turned and headed aft to check on the oxygen cylinders. I can't wait, she muttered hoarsely to his retreating back before turning with a sigh to pull her wetsuit from her dive bag. With hours to go before they returned to the island, she was going to have to concentrate on her work, or the time would drag interminably. They couldn't even bolt straight off the boat once they docked, of course. Lucy had to help her team get the empty trays back to the research centre, and Bryce had to take all the oxygen cylinders back to the dive hut for test and refilling. By the time everything was done, it was almost six o'clock, and they'd agreed to meet Justine for dinner at seven. Lucy should really be washing out her salty hair in the shower and deciding what to wear, but instead she was lying on the bed, wearing nothing but her red bikini, waiting for Bryce to get back. At last, the screen door slid open, 
and he brushed aside the curtain hanging over it with a puzzled look, since Lucy rarely bothered to draw it. Ah, he said, seeing her on the bed, and turned to close the door and replace the curtain. You waited for me, I see. He grinned broadly as he approached the bed, yanking his shirt off over his head and discarding it onto the floor. The shower stall was way too small for two. Even so, Lucy could be inventive when she wanted to be. They were very late. Chapter 15 Lucy floated through the next few days on a dreamlike cloud of happiness. Even Justine's constant critical scrutiny and regular barbed comments couldn't pierce her bubble. Bryce was by her side every moment they could possibly contrive. Nobody would have doubted that they were utterly in love. Or at least, in lust. It should probably have bothered her more than it did that the wedding was starting to feel real. She began to feel invested in the plans Terry and Jerome were making, in Olivia's marketing plans, in every little detail of the big day. She almost got into a row with Justine over the menu for the wedding luncheon, at least until Bryce drew her aside and murmured quietly in her ear, You've loved everything Susanna has ever cooked. Trust her to make it perfect. Just hearing his voice in her ear calmed her, grounded her. She let him take her hand, drew in a deep breath, and nodded. You're right, of course. Stop that, it's annoying. The corners of Bryce's eyes crinkled up in the way she was coming to love as he smiled. Just trying to be the voice of reason for my bridezilla. Ugh, oh, am I really? She wrinkled her nose. Little bit. He held up a hand forefinger and thumb an inch or so apart. It's totally turning me on, though. Can we sneak off and you can use that bossy voice to order me around in bed? He could always make her laugh. She almost fell into his arms, feeling his warmth and strength as they closed around her. I couldn't do this without you, she mumbled against his chest. You don't have to. Just a couple more days, Angel. He kissed her forehead. Hang in there. Lucy had lost weight in the last two weeks, Bryce thought as he hugged her close. Justine was getting to her. She never said anything about Lucy's weight, but she always made a point of only taking a small amount of food, eating about half of it, then watching Lucy with raised eyebrows if she kept eating. The subtle psychological pressure was clearly taking a toll. Bryce could hardly wait for Justine to leave for the tiny stress lines around Lucy's mouth to relax, for her to eat a full meal without eyeing her plate suspiciously. Glancing across at where Justine was immersed in discussions of flower arrangements with the two wedding planners, Bryce guided Lucy outside and around the corner, out of sight. She didn't seem to want to let go of him, hanging on tightly around his waist. Fortunately, there was a couch there, positioned to allow guests a quiet space if required so he pulled her to sit down with him, not particularly surprised when she wiggled onto his lap and tucked her face into his neck. Lucy wasn't cuddly in her sleep, but she most certainly was while awake. Only a couple more days, and one of those is the wedding, he murmured soothingly against her hair. And if Justine dares be bitchy to you on our wedding day, I swear I'll throw her off the dock. He felt her shoulders shake as she laughed silently. Then she pulled back and looked up at him, whispering softly, It's not really our wedding day, though. Bryce didn't say anything. The wedding had begun to seem real to him. Sharing Lucy's bed and her life felt so utterly right and natural. Being married to her was just one more logical step. They hadn't even talked about what they would do once Justine had gone home, though, and adding to Lucy's stress by pressing her on the matter was unthinkable at the moment. Instead, he nodded, kissed her forehead, and pulled her to lie against him again. Tomorrow's your girl's spa day, he murmured, and our friends will all be there for you. Olivia and Nessa and the others have Justine's measure, so relax and let yourself be pampered. I'm looking forward to it, actually. Except the part about the photographer following us around. Well, she's female as well and you already covered with her what you do and don't want shown. Just go with the flow and enjoy the day, Angel. He nuzzled her hair. 
The girls in the spa are good, but they can't improve on perfection anyway. You really are very good for my ego. He could feel Lucy smiling against his throat as she spoke. You make me feel beautiful, for the first time in my life. You are beautiful. I could strangle your mother for what she's done to your self-confidence. He tightened his hold. I'm going to keep telling you until you believe it. You're beautiful. The most beautiful woman I know. If I didn't know better, I'd say you two were a loving couple just about to get married. Luke's dry remark made them both startle up. He stood looking down at them, hands in the pockets of his grey suit trousers, shirt sleeves rolled up to his elbows, tie loose in his open collar. Uh, Lucy looked quickly to the door of the wedding planner's office. Don't worry, I'm not going to give you away. Terry and Jerome have her well in hand. Justine's met her match at last, I think. Just wondering what exactly is going on with the pair of you. It's not like you were putting on a show for anyone in particular just then. Luke kept his voice low. Or oh, is that a question? Bryce asked, sure his cheeks were on fire with embarrassment. I wasn't asking a question, no. Probably about time the two of you asked each other a few, though. With a firm nod, Luke strode past them and along the hallway to his own office. He might be right, Lucy mumbled after a moment of awkward silence. She couldn't look directly at him, Bryce noted, and her face was as red as his felt. It can wait, he said quietly. You've got enough on your plate, Luce. Once Justine's gone home, you and I can sit down and figure out what we're doing here. Lightly, he touched her chin, encouraging her to meet his eyes, and once she did, he told her, Just in case you're in any doubt, I don't want this, us, to end once she leaves. Lucy's smile was shy but blinding. Me neither. But you're okay with not talking it over until after the wedding, after Mum's gone home? Perfectly fine with it. No pressure even then, Angel. We'll talk when you're ready. Lucy had to bite on her lips to just keep from blurting out. I love you. How's that for talk? Instead, she sighed and pushed herself up off the couch. We better get back in there before Terry and Jerome decide they've had enough and strangle her. If she changes one more thing about the plans, I might just help them, Bryce muttered, but he stood up too and took her hand. Once more into the breach, huh? As many more times as you need me to, Angel. She almost said it then. Instead, she tightened her fingers around his, thinking that some way, somehow, once Justine was gone, she was going to do everything she possibly could to build a real relationship with Bryce. The five years' age difference between them seemed utterly irrelevant now. He clearly couldn't care less about it, so why should she? If the difference was reversed, nobody would even think twice about it. Chapter 16 Lying in bed beside Lucy in the warm morning light on the day before their wedding, Bryce studied her sleeping face. With her hair splayed around her face like a dark halo, Lips parted slightly as she breathed in the slow rhythm of sleep. She looked like an angel to his dazzled eyes. He only hoped the spa day helped relax her rather than stress her out. Several of her friends had arranged their schedules to have at least part of the day with her. He'd impressed on Olivia the need never to leave Lucy alone with Justine, and Olivia had promised to stick to Lucy's side like glue. Several of the girls who worked at the spa were friends of his. They all knew about the situation as well, and had taken pains to assure Bryce they'd make sure Lucy had a good day, and they'd keep Justine too busy to needle or harass her daughter. Checking his watch, he grimaced slightly. He'd have to wake her shortly, and then he wouldn't see her until the actual ceremony tomorrow. Luke had put one of the premium resort cabins at their disposal for a couple of days as a wedding gift and an extra suite in the main resort for Lucy to sleep in tonight, both of which they felt slightly guilty about, but had no compunctions about accepting. Not when they'd had the photographer snapping candid shots of them both constantly for the last couple of days, too, 
right down to Bryce getting his hair cut yesterday morning. As she lay on his chest afterwards, both of them damp with sweat and breathing heavily, Bryce stroked her hair and tried to come up with the words to express how he felt. That was magical, he whispered finally, and felt Lucy smile against his chest. For a dyslexic, you've got a good way with words. If only, he mumbled. Maybe then he'd be able to find the ones he needed to tell Lucy he was hopelessly in love with her and praying she didn't drop him like a hot potato once Justine left the island. Thanks for the stress reliever. Lucy patted his chest before climbing off him. I got a shower before I go to the spa, or I'll stink of sex. The bathroom door clicked shut, leaving Bryce staring at it. Thanks for the stress reliever. Hopefully, Lucy was just even worse with words than he was. That may have been the worst post coital line in the history of the world, Lucy groaned, leaning her forehead against the shower wall and wishing the water could wash away her idiocy. I might just as well have said wham bam thank you man. And after Bryce had woken her up so delightfully too, when would she ever learn to just keep her mouth shut? Mind you, it would have been much, much worse to blurt out what she'd actually been thinking. Telling Bryce she loved him would probably have him running for the hills. With a sigh, she reached for the shampoo and started washing her hair. Their relationship was getting stranger by the day, trapped in the weird situation she'd put them in, with her own chicken-shit inability to stand up to her mother. What the hell were they going to do once Justine left? Would they just go back to being friends? Would Bryce move back to his own cabin? Closing her eyes against the sting as she rinsed the shampoo out, Lucy blew water droplets out with frustration. She was too scared to talk to Bryce about their relationship until after Justine left, not that she thought he'd bail on her at this stage. They just had to stick it out a couple more days, get through the wedding day, and then they could talk. Really talk. She felt sick with anxiety at the mere thought. Bryce was gone when she left the bathroom, the bed neatly made. He was heading out on a full day dive today, Lucy knew, and that evening had been invited to Jace's villa with some of his friends among the male staff for a small bachelor party. Ready? A knock on the door made Lucy look up to see Olivia standing there with Gemma, the resort photographer who had been documenting the lead-up to the wedding. Yeah, Lucy said, dry-mouthed. Sure. Gemma had her camera in hand, but lowered it to look closely at Lucy as she walked past to leave the cabin. Are you okay, sweetie? You look a bit frazzled. That's what the spa day is supposed to be for, right? Lucy's laugh sounded fake to her own ears. Relax the bridal jitters? Gemma and Olivia looked at each other, and Lucy could practically hear the unspoken words. But you're not actually getting married. Just don't leave me alone with my mother, she carried on quickly. On top of it, Olivia said comfortingly, we've got you booked in for private sessions with Shay all day and your mum with Eleonora. You'll only see her at lunchtime when we'll all be together. Lucy took a few deep breaths as they walked up to the spa, a series of luxurious timber cabins set apart from the rest of the resort overlooking a crystal blue lagoon. She was going to relax and enjoy today, she was determined. She would never treat herself to this sort of thing normally, and she wasn't even paying. All she had to do was let Gemma take a few pictures for publicity use, and Gemma had even promised to let Lucy see them before they were published, too. Good morning, darling. Justine was already sitting in the waiting area, leafing through a glossy magazine. Morning, Mum. Looking forward to the spa? Why, yes, it's been a while since I treated myself. You're the one who needs it, though, darling. You look positively peaky. And that's why every time I never really even get started on feeling guilty about deceiving her, Lucy thought, grinding her teeth. Every time I even think about it, she says something like that. Ready to get started, ladies, a sweet voice said and Lucy looked around to see a petite, beautiful woman with a cap of short black curls framing her face, 
standing by the reception desk, a white beautician's smock wrapped around her slim form. I'm Shay, and I'll be taking care of the bride. That's me, Lucy said, raising her hand, and Shay gave her a warm smile. Come along with me, then. Eleonora will be out in just a few moments for you, she told Justine. Lucy hadn't encountered Shay before, but took to the other girl immediately. Shay's quiet, gentle manner was extremely reassuring, and she didn't chatter while she began Lucy's first treatment, a seaweed wrap over her whole body. Instead, she quietly checked Lucy was comfortable being photographed mid-treatment before calling Gemma in to take a few pictures. It felt odd lying on the table naked except for being wrapped in warm seaweed, but oddly relaxing. Lucy closed her eyes and put on a small smile as Gemma snapped a few pictures. Come back in an hour for the massage, Shay suggested. Will you be okay with that, Lucy? You'll be naked, but the shots have to be non-sexual anyway. Gemma can just take a picture of my hands on your back or shoulders. I trust you, girls, Lucy mumbled drowsily. She could already feel tense muscles letting go, was really looking forward to the massage now, as well as whatever else Shay had planned. She heard Shay laugh, say something to Gemma, and then a door closed. The next thing she knew, Shay was waking her up, telling her it was time to take the seaweed wrap off and wash down. Wow, Lucy mumbled, blinking to clear her eyes. I must have been more tired than I thought. It's a stressful time leading up to your wedding, Shay said sympathetically. You can snooze off again during your massage. I promise I won't mind. It's for relaxation rather than therapeutic, so you shouldn't feel any discomfort unless you've got really stiff muscles somewhere. Nothing in particular. Lucy shook her head as Shay gently washed her off with a warm, wet cloth. Are you married, Shay? she asked, feeling a little awkward about being naked on the table in front of the other girl, despite Shay's calmly impersonal manner. No, Shay said, a little flatly, and then, I almost was, once. How close is almost? Lucy couldn't resist asking. We were standing in front of the altar when he decided he didn't want to go through with it. Shay's smile was a little tight. Apparently, it was just me, though. He got married to someone else five months later. Oh, that's harsh. I'm so sorry, Lucy said sympathetically. Thanks. I'm over it, though. Better to find out he wasn't Mr. Wright before we said the vows than after. Truer words never spoken, Lucy agreed. Though I shouldn't be telling you my sob story. You're the one who's getting married to your gorgeous sweetheart tomorrow. I'm jealous. Bryce is a darling. Shay didn't know the wedding wasn't real, Lucy realised as the therapist poured a warm, sweetly scented oil into her hands and began the massage at the soles of Lucy's feet. It only took a minute for her to forget all about that, though, as Shay's talented hands found pressure points and muscles she didn't even know were tense began to relax. Oh God, that's wonderful, she mumbled, hearing Shay's quiet chuckle as she continued her work. Relax, Lucy. Let it all go. I'm going to massage all this stress out of you. Stop thinking about tomorrow and just focus on right now. Chapter 17 Bryce spent all day worrying about how Lucy was getting on. Once the boat was out on the reef, he had no phone signal, so couldn't text Olivia or Rosie to check in on her. He considered asking Jodie, the boat captain, to radio in, but she gave him a very old-fashioned look when he hinted about it, so he shut his mouth. You just concentrate on doing your job, Sonny, Jodie said dryly. I'm about 95% certain Lucy will still be on the island when you get back. Only 95? Anxiety sent a crawling tension up Bryce's spine. Why wouldn't she be? Have you heard something? Did I say 95? I meant 100. Oh, look, that guy's putting his fins on too early. What a dick. Jody deflected him smartly, grinning behind his back as he turned to check on the rookie diver automatically. They were almost up on the dive site, and Bryce would be kept busy buddy-checking everyone's tanks, hoses, connectors and regulators until they were in the water, 
then keeping an overall eye out once they were down. Hopefully, keeping busy would keep his mind off his wedding jitters. Bryce could tell Jody was trying to distract him, and he wasn't ungrateful. Every minute today seemed to be dragging endlessly. Whenever he looked at his watch, the numbers on the digital display had barely increased at all. The dive group were barely competent and sorely trying his patience, too. He felt an intense relief when Jody finally called time and the boat started back to the island. Bloody sit still, will you? You're distracting me. Jody never took her eyes off the horizon or her hands off the wheel as she spoke. Bryce stilled his bouncing leg and tried to take calm, slow breaths. Sorry. After a few minutes of desperately trying to stay still, he asked, Have you ever been married, Jody? The older woman shot an amused glance at him before returning her gaze to the sea. Twice, she replied eventually. First time, I was young and stupid, got married right out of high school. We were separated before I turned twenty. And the second time? Married a navy man. A smile touched her lips. The sea's always been the third party in our marriage. Works just fine. You're still married? Startled, Bryce looked at her left hand. He'd never seen Jodie wearing any rings or heard her mention a husband. Twenty-seven years just passed. He's the captain on the HMAS Wangaratta. Coming up on retirement next year and wondering what to do with himself. I'm trying to convince him to join me out here. You must have spent a lot of time apart over the years, Bryce commented thoughtfully. More apart than together, really. Jody shot a sideways glance at him. Don't let anyone tell you marriage is all sunshine and roses, son. It takes hard work and a shit ton of patience, but at the end of the day, the rewards are worth having. Callum and I might not have a conventional marriage where we sit down to dinner together every night, but it works for us because we both have the will and put in the effort to make it work. You do know Lucy and I aren't actually getting married, right? Bryce checked. The way I heard it, all you have to do is ask Luke to file the paperwork within a month and you will be legally married. Jody shrugged, not looking at him. Guess you've got a month to convince Lucy being married to you is all she ever wanted, huh? Bryce opened his mouth, but no words came out. Finally, he nodded his head, and Jody let out a quiet chuckle. Trust me, everyone can see how perfect the two of you are together. Oh, and Lucy's just as head over heels for you as you are about her, if you were worried about it. She is? Has she talked to you? Jody shook her head, laughing more loudly. No, she didn't have to. Anyone with eyes can see it, except you, obviously. Have a little faith, Bryce. Without being able to see and talk to Lucy, all Bryce could do was stew on Jody's words all the way back to the island and all evening. He got a good deal of good-natured joshing from his friends as they sat around drinking excellent wine and eating pizza at Jace's stunning villa, watching the sun go down over the ocean. It occurred to him, about halfway down a bottle of wine, that none of his friends were acting as though the wedding was anything but real, even though they all knew very well the whole thing had at least started as a prank. Corey! He grabbed at his friend's arm as Corey came to sit back down, pizza slice in hand. Why is everyone acting like this is a real wedding? Corey, rather the worse for wear on wine himself, had to consider that a while before shrugging. Well, it pretty much is, isn't it? Luke said all you have to do is file the paperwork. Why's he going round telling everyone that? Bryce demanded plaintively. Why don't you ask him yourself? Corey responded with impeccable logic. He's sitting right over there. Well, he and Jace are talking. I didn't want to interrupt. Corey chuckled. They're not talking business. Go on, head over there. Easy for Corey to say, Bryce thought, but he got to his feet as Corey nudged him. Corey was one of the senior resort personnel as activities manager, after all, despite his relative youth. Bryce was just a dive instructor, 
senior to the others who held the position only by virtue of having been employed at the resort longer. Here's the groom. Jace toasted him as he approached, smiling broadly, and Bryce gave the billionaire a tentative smile. Jace just didn't look or act like he'd been born with the proverbial silver spoon in his mouth, he thought privately. Right now, he was slouched on a poolside deck chair with an almost empty glass of red in his hand, wearing cargo shorts, a faded rock band t-shirt and rubber thongs on his feet. Are the wedding nerves kicking in, or is the wine helping take the edge off? The wine is definitely helping. Thank you, by the way. I'm not all that knowledgeable, but I can tell this is the good stuff. Bryce lifted his glass. Jace waved off his thanks with a grin. Can't have you waking up with a hangover tomorrow. I haven't met your bride, but I don't want to get off on the wrong foot by delivering a horribly hungover bridegroom from a Bucks party I hosted. And that was why Jace was different from other billionaires, Bryce was pretty sure. He'd met a few very wealthy men, since Sunfish Island was a playground for the well-heeled, and he couldn't imagine any of those self-centred characters would give a shit what a woman they hadn't even met might think of them. About tomorrow, Bryce said hesitantly. Luke lowered the glass he'd been about to take a sip from. You crying off? No. The refutation was swift and emphatic. I'd never do that to Lucy. Luke tilted his head to give him a thoughtful look, opened his hand in a gesture for Bryce to continue. I was wondering. Uh, you told Lucy and I that it would basically be a real wedding. We just wouldn't file the official paperwork. That's correct. Luke nodded. You have thirty days to file it if you change your minds and want to make it official, though. Yeah. And, um, I've been wondering why you've been telling everyone else about that. There was a distinct smirk on Luke's lips as he took a sip of wine before answering. Jace was looking interestedly between the two of them, spoke to fill in the silence. Is the gossip I heard true? that you and Lucy were just friends when this started off, but now you're hooking up. Bryce winced. Hooking up seems like such a crude way to put it. Lucy wasn't just a hook-up. She was far, far more than that. We're together. Yes. Fake romance turning real. It's a cute story. Jace offered him a friendly smile. Luke spoke up again, finally. And if you want to make it really real, all you have to do is ask me to file that marriage certificate. I don't deny I've mentioned it to a few other people, but I haven't instigated the conversations. I think you underestimate the amount of interest your friends have in your future happiness, Bryce. Yours and Lucy's. Bryce frowned and shook his head, not understanding. They want to see you happy. Both of you, Luke clarified. And it's obvious to anyone with eyes that you make each other happy. Putting the thought in your minds that maybe actually getting married could be the best thing that you can do for your mutual future happiness? He shrugged. I'm not surprised they're all but hitting you over the head with the idea. Oh. Startled, Bryce sat back and considered that. Do you know if anyone's mentioned it to Lucy? He asked hesitantly. Luke and Jace both laughed at that. Really? Jace snickered. The girls have spent all day getting their toenails painted and their legs waxed and God only knows what else together, and you think they haven't been talking about it? How could they? Her mother's there, and Justine doesn't know this is all a hoax. Women always find a way. Hell, Ness has been filling my ear with how romantic it would be if you two really got married. Jace finished his wine, seemed to consider going to get some more, and slumped down in his chair. Nah, I've had enough, he muttered. Maybe you and Lucy should just talk to each other about it, Luke said pointedly. Bryce had to laugh. Yeah, you're right. I mean, I knew we needed to talk, but I think we've both been putting it off until after Justine leaves. Put on a united face until then, you know. That woman. He shook his head slowly. I honestly find it hard to believe someone like her 
managed to raise a daughter as kind and loving and compassionate as Lucy. You're making me glad I haven't yet had the pleasure, Jace commented. Luke filled me in on who she is, obviously. She's a viper. Bryce blinked at Luke in surprise. He didn't think he'd ever heard the resort manager say anything so harsh about anyone before. Took the word right out of my mouth, he muttered. She's very good at pouring on the charm when she wants to, but I like to think I'm pretty good at reading people. Justine Manning has the coldest eyes I've ever seen. There's nothing but cold calculation behind them. Luke shook his head. Every interaction, she's thinking what benefit there might be to her. She's been posting photos on her Instagram and tagging the resort. We've had a distinct upsurge in bookings from the UK since she started, and she mentioned her activity to me yesterday and hinted heavily that she'd like another couple of weeks comp to her later in the year in exchange. Please tell me you said no. Bryce gaped in horror. I pretended to be extremely dense and not get the hint. If she wants to return, she can pay like everyone else. We're booked up months in advance these days anyway. All those UK bookings are coming towards the end of this year and into next year when we have vacancies. It's not really like we'd lose out if she hadn't done her little bit of promotion, and there's no direct evidence that's what's caused the uptick anyway. Luke smirked before finishing his wine and getting to his feet. If looks could kill, you'd be looking for a new general manager by now, Jace. More wine? What the hell? Jace held out his empty glass. Hit me up. Bryce? I've probably had enough. He smiled apologetically. Please don't force any more down me. I'm really going to need my wits about me tomorrow. Luke's smile was wry. Stick here with us, then. We might be the less fun corner, but at least nobody will make you do shots over here. Are you calling me old and boring? Jace objected. Well, I didn't use those words specifically. Luke attempted to backtrack, but Jace cut him off with laughter. It's perfectly fine. Hey, I'm so boring I retired from being a New York playboy billionaire. Retired you may be, but you're definitely not boring, Bryce put in. Believe me, I'm more than happy to hang out with you guys. He toasted Jace with his glass, and Luke, returning with a fresh bottle, topped it up in passing. Sip on that. We'll wrap it up in an hour or so anyway. Jace can kick everyone out. I'm totally useless as a bouncer, Jace protested, making both of them laugh. Bryce relaxed back into his chair, feeling a lot more comfortable now. Luke and Jace were his bosses, yes, but they were also both incredibly approachable and friendly. He could definitely see why Nessa, easily the best judge of character he knew, had fallen for Jace. So, Jace said now, I've never learned to dive and Luke tells me it's the only way to see some of the best bits of the reef. How about some private lessons? Any time you like, Bryce said. After the wedding, of course. I'll be knocking on your door bright and early the day after tomorrow then, Jace teased. I wouldn't advise it, to be honest. It might be only a fake wedding, but Lucy and I have planned some real days off, starting with a lie-in the day after. Knocking on my door early will mean you get to face an irate Lucy, and I wouldn't recommend that. Not unless you'd like your balls rearranged, anyway. Jace roared with laughter and leaned over to tap his glass against Bryce's. To feisty women, he said, still laughing. May they never change. Amen to that, Bryce agreed. Chapter 18 Rise and shine, Princess Bride! Her. Lucy shot upright, disorientated at first to find herself not in her own bed. Nessa was standing over her, a broad grin on her face. Through the doorway behind her, she could see Rosie, Jill and Olivia already bustling around, and she was sure she could hear a male voice amidst the feminine chatter. It's nine o'clock, sugar. Didn't sleep well? Appalling, Lucy confessed, rubbing at her eyes. I kept waking up because I couldn't hear Bryce breathing. She'd had trouble going to sleep, even after a few glasses of champagne, 
and then kept waking up every few minutes. Nessa's smile was sympathetic. I know exactly what you mean. Even though Jace was snoring like a chainsaw when I crawled in next to him last night, I still slept better than I did while he was away. Bryce doesn't snore. Nor does Jace, usually, but considering the number of empty wine bottles in the kitchen, I think it was quite a party. Huh. <sighs> Rolling her head around on her neck, Lucy stretched her arms out to the sides. Despite the crappy sleep, I feel good. Shay loosened out knots I didn't even know I had. She's good. And she's here to help you with your hair and makeup, so get your ass out of that bed and have a shower. Ten minutes, or I'll sick Terry and Jerome on you. You'll mess up their carefully planned timetable if you take any longer. Nessa gave her a laughing wink before closing the bedroom door and leaving Lucy alone again. Quite sure Nessa would carry through on her threat, Lucy scrambled out of bed and ran for the bathroom. Her hair had been washed and styled the day before, so she stuffed it hastily into a shower cap to keep it from getting wet while she washed. When she emerged, wrapped in a fluffy toweling robe, Shay was waiting with her gentle smile and quiet manner, a case of makeup ready on the dresser, beside a croissant and a cup of coffee. I'm not big on a lot of makeup. Lucy eyed the big case doubtfully as she sat down at Shay's wordless gesture and reached for her breakfast. Um, if I wear a lot of makeup, I look more like my mother than I'm comfortable with. I'll keep it light and natural, Shay promised. It's going to be hot today anyway. You don't need it all melting off to leave marks on your dress. Gemma slid into the room to take pictures as Shay used a delicate, skilful touch to just touch up Lucy's natural beauty. They'd already agreed Lucy would wear her hair half up, half down, with some intricate braids pulling the top section away from her face, before Shay arranged the rest in an artful tumble of soft waves, falling forward over her left shoulder. A strand of pearls on loan from the resort jewellery shop held the arrangement in place, more pearls in her earlobes, and a single teardrop-shaped one hanging from a gold chain at the hollow of her throat, completing a simple, classical look. You look stunning, Gemma sighed, kneeling on the floor to get an upwards shot of Lucy looking in the mirror. You'll knock Bryce's socks off. Have you seen the response we've been getting on the big wedding series on Instagram and Facebook? The bookings for weddings are going cray-cray. Terry and Jerome have been hitting up Luke to hire them another assistant to handle all the details they don't have time for. That was good. Creating good publicity for the resort at least assuaged a little of Lucy's guilt over having so much effort expended on something which wasn't even real. You're a miracle worker, Shay, she said, hardly recognising the woman in the mirror. That woman looked a good deal younger than Lucy's thirty years, fresh-faced and bright-eyed, her hair elegantly arranged. Shay laughed. No miracles required when I've got such a wonderful canvas to work with. All we need now is the dress. Gemma set the camera down. Let me help? Please. No shots until you're in it, I promise. Of course. It's hanging up in the wardrobe right there, Lucy gestured. The only thing she was planning to wear under the dress was a pair of white silk panties and a blue silk garter Olivia had given her. Strapless, the boned corset of the dress lifted and supported her breasts perfectly when Shay laced it up for her, multiple layers of chiffon silk skirts falling just to her ankles. Lucy had flatly refused to wear the stiletto heels Olivia had tried to talk her into, preferring flats, especially since she knew she'd have to walk on sand to take the sunset photos on the beach, which were part of the day's plan. In the end, they'd compromised on wedges with a one-inch heel, comfortable enough to walk all day in if she needed to. While she didn't officially have bridesmaids, the bridal shop who had provided her dress had outfitted Olivia, Nessa, Rosie and Jill with four silk sheath dresses in four different colours, with shoes to match. They looked like a garden of exotic tropical flowers as Lucy stepped hesitantly into the suite's living area, bright and beautiful in turquoise, golden yellow, emerald and fuchsia. Oh, you all look spectacular, Lucy said, delighted. Gemma, take some photos. 
They all laughed at her. You're the bride, darling. Olivia took her arm, gently urged her into the middle of the group. And you outshine us by miles, I must say. You'll knock Bryce's socks off. Gemma's camera clicked rapidly as the friends embraced. Shay stood back, smiling a little wistfully, until Terry entered to tell them it was time to go. You look fabulous, darlings, but I don't have time to pay you flowery compliments. Jerome's babysitting Bryce and reports he's in a bit of a panic. Terry grinned at Lucy. So, let's get you there on time, hmm? I've got golf carts and drivers waiting downstairs. Move it, move it, ladies. He clapped his hands together, chivying them from the room. Of course, it wasn't so simple. They had to pause everywhere, in the lobby so other guests could gawk at Lucy and Gemma could snap some more photos, at the golf cart where Shay helped arrange her skirt and tweaked her hair one last time. Lucy felt as though she was about to burst with frustration by the time the procession finally got going, hers the last cart to roll away. Terry was driving her himself, Shay sitting beside him, in case any last-minute adjustments were required to Lucy's appearance, Gemma in the cart in front, even now hanging out the back to take more pictures. Are you OK? Shay turned to ask as they drove slowly up the paved path to the scenic pavilion overlooking the sea where the ceremony was to be held. You're not wearing enough makeup to cover the fact that you've gone kinda pale. I just want this to be over, Lucy confessed. Shay's smile was sympathetic. Just relax and let yourself enjoy the day, she advised. Look at the sky, not a cloud in sight. It's the most perfect shade of blue. Listen to the birds, smell the sea air and the tropical flowers. Just take it all one minute at a time. Close your eyes for a moment and take deep breaths. I'll count for you. Breathe in. Two, three, four. Hold. Two, three, four. Breathe out. Two, three, four. Hold. Two, three, four. Breathing deeply in time with Shay's quiet chanting, Lucy felt the tightness in her chest easing. She felt the cool breeze against her cheeks as the cart coasted along the track, heard parrots squawking in the trees as they passed, smelled the heady hibiscus mixed with salt in the air. Better? Shay asked quietly. Yeah. Lucy kept her eyes closed, though, maintaining the steady rhythm of her breathing. That's good, because we're here, and Terry's about to stop the cart. Keep up that breathing, sweetie. Lucy opened her eyes. They were just slowing down, Terry bringing the cart into line with the others waiting behind the pavilion. Her four bridesmaids were waiting for her, smiling broadly, and behind them she could see quite a little crowd seated in front of the pavilion. At the front of the crowd, Bryce was standing between Luke and Corey, his eyes fixed on her as Terry helped her out of the cart. Seeing him there, standing tall and straight, his fair hair cut neatly short, his face clean-shaven, wearing a silver-grey waistcoat over an open-collared white shirt and light-grey formal pants, he looked so handsome the unreality of the situation struck Lucy forcibly. Of course this wedding wasn't real. No way would she be walking up the aisle to marry a man who looked like that. She was just ordinary, by her own choice, and guys like Bryce didn't marry ordinary. Lucy didn't even see her mother in the front row pretending to cry as she walked through the crowd to Bryce. He was gazing at her, lips slightly parted as though about to speak, an expression she couldn't really define on his handsome face. She had to remind herself to walk slow, not to just run to him and cling on tight. It seemed to take an eternity to traverse the short distance which separated them, reminding herself to keep her smile in place with every step. Bryce stared in awe as Lucy walked towards him. She looked like a princess in that dress, a single white lily clasped in her hands, the perfect finishing touch to complete the illusion of classic perfection. A soft smile illuminated her face as she approached, and he reached out to take her hand instinctively. You look incredible, he said sincerely, 
causing a little ripple of laughter among their audience and Lucy's smile to widen. I was thinking the same, she said saucily, letting her eyes drop and come back up again in a blatant once-over. I love you, he almost blurted, but managed to close his lips over the words, squeezing Lucy's hand lightly instead, before turning to face Luke, who was grinning broadly at both of them. Welcome, Luke began, to the wedding of Bryce Seabrook and Lucinda Marie Manning. Chapter 19 Lucy struggled to pay attention as Luke spoke. She and Bryce had opted to go with the simplest, shortest version of the marriage ceremony and standard vows. Bryce's look of horror when Luke asked if they were going to write their own had been enough for Lucy to immediately veto the idea. I do, she said at the appropriate moment, surprised by how clear and definite her voice sounded. Her gaze locked with Bryce's, she felt strong and confident, somehow certain she was exactly where she was supposed to be. Suddenly, it was all over, and Luke was pronouncing them to be man and wife. Kiss the bride, mate, Corey yelled loudly, and Bryce laughed, slipping his arm around Lucy's waist and dipping her backwards. She found herself giggling too, reaching up to hook her arms round his neck and hold on tight as his mouth came down on hers. Save that for later, Luke said in a gently reproachful tone about a minute later, amid loud cheers and shouts of, Get a room! Lucy was laughing as Bryce lifted her back upright, her eyes sparkling with joy, and he very nearly kissed her again right then. They were being swarmed by their friends, though, separated and both hugged and congratulated loudly. Accepting a surprisingly tearful embrace from Olivia, Bryce spotted from the corner of his eye Justine edging in to embrace Lucy. Danger incoming, he muttered in Olivia's ear, and she promptly released him, in time for him to get back to Lucy as Justine spoke. You look beautiful, my darling, Justine gushed. Although... Bryce spoke loudly, before Justine could make whatever backhanded compliments or outright criticisms, she'd undoubtedly spent the whole ceremony thinking up. Doesn't she, though? I've always known you were the most beautiful woman I'd ever met, he spoke directly to Lucy. But today, well, you take my breath away. High colour staining Lucy's cheeks, she ducked her head a little and laughed shyly. It's the dress. It's a pretty dress, but it's the woman wearing it I can't stop staring at. Very conscious of Justine standing by, lips pursed as though she'd just sucked on a lemon, Bryce tucked his arm around Lucy's waist, holding her possessively close. Could I get a photo of you as the mother of the bride, Justine? Gemma asked at that moment. Love that hat, by the way. Justine preened, lifting a hand to touch the brim of the angled, super-fashionable scarlet hat she wore, a stunning foil for her designer white silk gown, printed all over with huge red poppies. I took a trip over to Hamilton Island to get it. There are some quite nice shops there. Bryce saw Lucy roll her eyes, grinned. Quite nice was a very understated description for the upmarket boutiques Justine had spent a day touring. She'd had to buy an extra suitcase to take all her new purchases back to England in. Luke touched his arm then, drew them both aside to sign the wedding certificate and the resort's wedding register. Then it was time for Lucy to have some pictures with her bridesmaids, and Terry and Jerome became Gemma's willing assistants, chivying everyone into the perfect positions for photos. Lunch was booked for the party at La Sirene, the resort's Michelin-starred restaurant, and even Justine could find no fault with the incredible food served to them by unobtrusive staff, nor the superb wine Jace had provided from his private cellar. Anticipating that Justine would, given the opportunity, stand up and say any number of unkind things about Lucy, in the guise of reminiscing about her childhood, Bryce had already put his foot down and declared there weren't going to be any speeches, because he quite simply didn't want to give one. Corey presented a toast to the bridesmaids, grinning besottedly at Olivia as he did so, and then Luke proposed one to the bride and groom, 
and that was the sum total of the formalities at the meal. Bryce was pretty sure Justine was gritting her teeth to keep her smile firmly fixed in place, but he deliberately asked Terry and Jerome to seat her in between Luke and Jace, so she could hardly complain she wasn't given a place of honour. Bryce just had no intention of allowing her to belittle Lucy on their wedding day. Once again, he had to remind himself the wedding wasn't real. Lucy would have a real wedding one day, to some lucky bastard Bryce already hated without knowing a thing about him. The mere thought of her walking down the aisle to some other man, her eyes glowing with love for someone who wasn't him, made him feel sick to his stomach. After the luncheon was when Bryce and Lucy really had to earn their keep, or at least earn back the cost of putting on the wedding by letting Gemma photograph them at every scenic spot on the island, including in the honeymoon cabin they were getting for the night, complete with a beautiful feast of cold foods laid on for them before another quick trip out for sunset photos on the beach. Lucy blessed the speedy tropical sunsets as darkness finally fell and Gemma regretfully lowered her camera at last. That's all, folks, she said with a smile. You can drop the glued-on smiles now. Good, because my face feels like it's about to crack, Lucy joked, sagging against Bryce. You've been a trooper, Bryce praised, putting his arm around her. We done, Gemma. Consider your dues paid. I'm off to lock myself in my office and spend the next few days buried in Photoshop and Instagram. Gemma grinned wickedly at them and said teasingly, I'll let you know if we need any reshoots. That prompted Lucy to flip her the bird, which made Gemma burst out laughing before she hopped in her golf cart and headed back to the resort. Bryce had long since commandeered one to drive himself and Lucy around, and he helped her back in now before getting into the driver's seat. Do you want to check in with everyone else? he asked. Absolutely not. He grinned at her definitive answer. Leaving them to their own amusements it is, then. Let's go see if there's any of our feast left. Gemma said a staffer was coming in to put everything in the fridge so we can just help ourselves. Lucy leaned her head against his shoulder as he put the golf cart in drive. I'm so tired, Bryce. She smothered a massive yawn in her hand. Me too. No idea how people have the energy for wedding nights after doing this for real, plus an evening reception, Bryce joked. Can't imagine. Lucy yawned again. Maybe I'll perk up once I've gotten out of this dress and had something to eat. It's spectacular, but I've been wondering all day how you were breathing in it. Your waist looks so tiny. The golf cart only needed one hand to drive, so Bryce slid his free arm around said tiny waist. Lucy chuckled quietly against his shoulder. Breathing's not too bad. It's eating and drinking which is the problem, or rather, the after-effects of. Going to the bathroom is a bit of a production. I was glad Gemma wasn't there taking photos while Olivia and Shay were both helping hold the skirt above my head so I could pee. Bryce broke up laughing at the mental image her words invoked, and Lucy giggled along with him. This has been a really awesome day, Bryce said impulsively. It has, hasn't it? Lucy agreed. Honestly, it's been the most perfect wedding day. I couldn't have wished for anything more. Say something, a little inner voice yelled at Bryce, but they were pulling up outside the honeymoon cabin now, and he shut off the motor, getting out of the golf cart and offering Lucy his hand. She took it with a bright smile up at him. You look so beautiful, he managed to get out as he led her inside. The, uh, the pearls in your hair really, really look amazing. And the dress and everything. You scrub up pretty well yourself. Lucy flicked at the edge of his waistcoat with a polished fingernail. Closing the door behind them, Bryce glanced around the cabin to check they were really alone. Lucy, he began, but she was already tugging her hand out of his, kicking her shoes off and walking away towards the bedroom. Please come help me out of this dress, she begged. It'd be really nice to take a deep breath. Swallowing the words, he followed her. She stopped beside the bed 
and glanced over her shoulder at him. The laces untie here. Putting one hand to the small of her back, she plucked at the ribbon bow tied there. Then loosen them upwards. You shouldn't need to unthread them all the way, just loose enough to slide down. OK. He felt all thumbs as he took the thin silk ribbons in his fingers and picked clumsily at the knot, silently cursing whoever had tied a double knot in the bow. Did you have to hold on to the bedpost to get laced into this? He tried to make small talk as he worked. Lucy chuckled softly. Like Kate Winslet in Titanic. Have you seen that? I confess I have. I like movies, and we do get free access to the resort's Movies on Demand channel. Finally, the knot came loose in his fingers. Not exactly like that. I didn't need to get laced into a 19-inch waist or whatever it was. I was holding the front up while Shay laced the back, actually. As the laces came loose, Lucy sagged a little bit, taking in a deep breath and letting it out. Phew! I understand now why all the pictures of ladies from the old days show them with perfect posture, though. You don't have much choice. The bodice came loose, and Lucy made no attempt to catch it as the whole dress slid to the floor, leaving her nude but for her thong and the blue garter around her thigh. Bryce almost swallowed his tongue. Fuck, that's all you've been wearing under this dress all day, he asked, his voice hoarse. Lucy turned to him, smiling, and reached to put her arms around his neck. Bet you can't get out of your clothes that fast. Bet I can give it a red-hot go. She'd only managed to remove her earrings and necklace before he'd shed everything and was on her, pulling her down to the bed with him, both of them laughing wildly. Wait, wait, I gotta get these pearls out of my hair, Lucy begged through her giggles. If I break the strand, I'll be in so much trouble. Bryce sighed exaggeratedly, but helped her unpin the arrangement which held up the top part of her hair. The pearls fell free, and he discarded them to the bedside table, running his fingers through her silky dark locks. Lucy. He put all the depth of emotion he felt for her into the single word, and her laughter died, her eyes wide as she looked up at him. Bryce? Her voice was small and soft, questioning. You have to know how I feel about you. The words burst out of him, too fast, tangling on his tongue, but he knew she understood by the way she went stiff against him, pupils blowing wide with shock. I'm in love with you, Lucy. I have been since the first time I saw you, I think, and today has been like the culmination of every dream I ever had, but, but I can't do this. Not if you don't feel the same way. I can pretend until your mother goes home, but... Bryce. Tears started in Lucy's eyes, and she reached up, placed one finger against his lips to still his babble. I love you. Chapter 20 I love you. Lucy said it again when Bryce said nothing in response, just stared at her, a frown furrowing his brow. Today's been like a crazy wonderful dream for me, too. That, plus everyone's been telling me I gotta hang on to you, that now we're together, we should stay in it for the long haul, that we should ask Luke to file that marriage certificate before the 30-day deadline. I've been hearing that, too, Bryce said finally. It's almost like we've got our own little fandom frantically shipping us together. The corner of his mouth quirked up, a glint of amusement entering his eyes. I'm pretty sure there was a betting pool on when we'd first sleep together. From her smirk the day after, I think Nessa won it. Lucy bit back a laugh. Yeah, she confessed as much to me yesterday. I asked how they all knew. Apparently, uh, sound carries quite well at night, and Rosie heard us that night when she was walking back to her cabin. Plus... I had shocking stubble rash the following day, and you were, to quote Corey, strutting around smirking like the cat who got the cream. Sounds legit, Bryce admitted sheepishly. Look, Lucy, there are a lot of different ways we could take this from here. We could take it back a step once your mother leaves. I could move back to my cabin, 
and we can date for a while, take things slower. Lucy was already shaking her head. What would be the point? I already know I like living with you, like waking up next to you. We've spent the last two weeks as much in each other's pockets as we're ever going to get, considering the amount of time we've both had off work, in a pretty stressful situation, given Mum's presence and the whole wedding thing. I say we go forward from here. Chewing on her lip, she awaited his answer anxiously. That'd be my vote as well, Bryce agreed, and Lucy let out an audible sigh of relief. I doubt I'd end up sleeping in my own bed more than once in a blue moon anyway. If we make this official, we can apply for one of the couple's cabins too, which are bigger. Lucy hadn't even thought of that, but he was quite correct. Justine didn't know about the policy, so they hadn't bothered, but once two staff members completed paperwork to declare they were in an official relationship, they were able to put themselves on the list to get one of the bigger cabins when one became available. Though she didn't mind sharing her space with Bryce, she couldn't deny it was decidedly cosy for two people to live there full time. Good idea, she agreed. And, uh, the other thing? The other thing? She chewed on her lip again before mumbling. The paperwork thing, while avoiding his eyes. Lucy. Bryce touched her cheek gently. Look at me. Taking a deep breath, she looked up into his blue eyes, once again marvelling at how handsome he was. I just told you that today was a dream come true for me. Being married to you would be living in that dreamland, full time, every day. I can't imagine ever not wanting to be married to you. So as far as I'm concerned, let's take a walk up to Luke's office and ask him to file those papers, first thing tomorrow. I'm all in with you, Lucy. All the way. Oh, she gulped, tears welling again. Oh, damn, I'm going to cry. Please don't. He leaned down to kiss her trembling lips, pulling her close against him and stroking her back until she stopped trembling, made a protesting little noise against his mouth. Sorry. He pulled back and smiled down at her ruefully. Seeing you cry just breaks me. Can't deal, I'm afraid. Your fault. She sniffed back more impending tears valiantly. You're making me too happy. Is that a yes? Cautious delight dawned. Was there a question? She teased. Do I need to go down on one knee? Okay, then, when she shook her head. Will you, uh, make our marriage official, my darling, beautiful, brilliant, almost wife? She didn't hesitate a moment before saying, Yes! The End You have been listening to Her Fake Island Wedding, book three in the Island Escape series, by Caitlin Lynch. Narrated by Catherine Bilson. Copyright 2018. Audiobook Production Copyright 2020 For more books by Caitlin Lynch, visit her website at caitlinlynch.com.